dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old guys and sing a song we'll roll the old guys and sing a song we'll roll the old guys and sing a song cause it's the end time along the sword coast south of Neverwinter, and just on the northern reaches of the feared Mirror of Dead Men, there is a sleepy little backwater town by the name of Saltmarsh. For years and years, it has gone unnoticed, unwatched, and unheeded by the greater powers of the Sword Coast and of greater Faerun itself. That is all beginning to change as the trade routes along the Sword Coast, most importantly, the high road leading between Waterdeep and Neverwinter, become more bustling as the dwarven city of Gauntlegrim begins rebuilding. The... Sword Coast itself is becoming more and more metropolitan, more and more noticed. And Salt Marsh itself has found itself in a perfect position. A trading port, a waylay for travelers. And to top it all off, in the hills nearby, a massive vein of silver no ore way. has been discovered completely untouched and ripe for the picking. Miners from Gontelgrim, authorities from Neverwinter and Waterdeep alike, now all have their eyes set on Saltmarsh. This sleepy little backwater town is about to be at the center of politics, intrigue, and more here on the Sword Coast. <clears throat> At the present day, six adventurers, some unaware that that is even to be their title just yet, find themselves here in Saltmarsh. Talese and Inaris, after absconding and ditching a contract from a patriar in Baldur's Gate, you have thought the furthest you can get from, or the further you can get from Baldur's Gate, the better. You made your way all the way up to Waterdeep and it just didn't seem like it was far enough. So you have continued all the way up, passing the fortified port of Thornhold making the daunting trip, skirting the edges of the Mayor of Dead Men, and have made your way to Saltmarsh. You hear it's quiet. Not much is going on. And after paying someone for a bit of information, you have found that there is a young man by the name of Anders Solmore, who is looking to hire and who is willing to ask very few questions. You reach the edge of town, and see an almost laughably um, undefended gate. A pair of guards stand at the front of it, but the gate stands wide open. Just inside, you see a uh, guard tower, what seems to be a barracks, 
And then right next to that, a small inn. The greater harbor of salt marsh, some slouching mansions, um, some shacks, piers, all set along a river and, a de- and a, along a river delta, all lay in front of you. But first, this little inn. As you approach it, you see there is hanging on a sign above the door, a sign. There are no words. The sign itself is the name of the tavern. It is a wicker goat hanging from a post. Just as you approach, it's about, it is early morning, but the um, misty uh, sea fog has not yet fully been burnt off by the high sun. Just as you're approaching, your attention is drawn to a short, stocky man being pushed out of the double doors from this inn of the rundown tavern. Landing underneath the tavern sign, the man scrambles to his feet, cursing at the two people in front of him. Pushing him out were a tall, middle-aged man with a stern face and a red-haired female dwarf, burly arms crossed before her. Hold your tongue before you say something that really gets me mad, you old sea dog, the tall man says angrily. You're free to visit if you want an ale that doesn't taste like the piss you serve down at the net. But I'll not tolerate you stealing away my customers right under my nose, Kreb. Wearing an angry shade of red under his thick whiskers, this Kreb responds with an accusatory finger. I buggered you, Lankus. I was just doing me civic duty by informing the folks over here that there will be free food and drink at the empty net tonight, courtesy of Mr. Primewater. <laughs> Why, Lady Copperlocks, I thought ye and yours was supposed to keep order around here, but you're letting this landlubber violate me while you imprison honest fishermen just trying to earn a living wage. The red-haired dwarf holds back the uh, tavern keeper who has gone forward to um, silence the man and sighs. We've imprisoned smugglers, not fishermen. Although I can imagine how you'd have a hard time distinguishing between the two with the clientele you keep. And while it is Councilman Primewater's right to hold a banquet in their honor at your establishment, it is also Lancus's right here to forcibly evict unwanted patrons from his private property. Go about your business now, Kreb, before I report ye to Captain Eliander for disturbing the peace. And worst of all, my lunch. She turns a cold shoulder and enters back into the tavern. You are left standing outside the tavern as the um, owner identified to you as um, excuse me, as Lancus stands there, sighs and runs a hand through his silvery hair. At about this time, Skipping up to the side of the two of you is a furry creature in traveling clothes. Well, this is... And he kind of rubs his eyes, thinking it must be some sort of effect from the drink or the salt of the sea or something, and looks. Who are... Who the hell are you? Valentine. Ineris and Talise, who do they see standing? Who does he see standing in front of him? We will start with Ineris. Ineris is a drow, drow elf woman, long, of course, long white hair, uh, if you couldn't tell. Just your typical kind of roguish clothes, black leathers. She's got her boots. You can see that she has a short sword visibly strapped to her waist. Um, She's got a short bow and your typical red eyes, red pendant, 
and a few bits and bobs sort of hanging off of her underneath her cloak. All right. And his eyes move over towards Talise. Talise is um, a water genasi cleric with, honestly, her most striking feature would be her hair, which um, the color is a little interesting. It starts dark blue and then it blends down into like a shocking white, sort of matching Inaris vaguely uh but the cool the interesting thing with her hair is that it it would be long like down her back but it never lays flat so it's always constantly moving as if she's in the water and it's always slightly behind her movement so even if she didn't have seafoam green skin you could tell that there's something slightly different by this trail of <laughs> hair, graceful flowing hair. She doesn't have any, I know, she doesn't have any weapons that you can see because she has a cloak that she has sort of pinned with, um, with a thunderbolt symbol, which is the symbol for her patron deity. Very yeah. cool. And the three of you all turn to look at well if this company oh. could get any stranger it just has as valentine prances up next to you you see standing before you a tall black cat with a north star on his chest he's of noble sort of bearing or at least he thinks he has it uh, he wears the unmistakable gear of a ranger with a long bow and quiver strapped to his back and the hood of his cloak pulled up over his dark green eyes. Valentine Long Tom is looking for work and is eager to find it. Right. So what on earth are this is this trio doing here in Saltmarsh? Especially you, as he looks towards you, Inaris, his eyes narrowing with no small amount of suspicion. I don't really think that's any of your concern, unless you're paying, of course. Round here, folks like to look out for one another. This isn't Luskin, dear. We have right. rules, we keep the order. I can and see that. We watch you folk just... like you pitched a man into the street. He was trying to steal away my customers. It's my property. It's my right. And if I saw a dark elf hanging around his home, I would let him know regardless because that's what good citizens do. You seem now, like an annoyance. Annoyance, yes. He may be but you. not a threat. And that I've yet to determine for you. I fought your kind before. It's awfully bright out, isn't it? It's of no matter to me. Hm. You hear that verb? He thinks we're a threat. And you see a small little parrot come hopping up onto Long Tom's shoulder. I don't think we're a threat. Do you? She chirps. And Talise turns to the bird. Hi, bird. I don't think you're a threat either. Oh, you're so cute. Careful, she bites. Oh, then maybe she is a threat. Well. Hmm. So, we are looking for work, my good man. I can't imagine you would know the direction to point us in. Perhaps to your fine establishment, Mr. Uh, I think I heard Landkiss. Uh... Landkiss is my name. Oh, good. This is my inn. It's the oldest inn here in Saltmarsh. Well, since we are currently out, can we go in? You may, but I have no work for your kind. This is no doubt the, well, this is no doubt the result of that Salmore boy looking, f hiring outside the community. Is that why you've come? 
heard about those messages. So someone is hiring. So you're not hiring, but someone is hiring. (sighs) Head into town. Ask for Soulmore. 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 I see. Anders Soulmore, Soulmore, yes. Oh, thank you. You've been... What were you saying, Inez? Perhaps we should go to the tavern that's offering the free food. (laughs) If you like a bellyache. Would you like a bellyache? You're seeming rather kind of unhappy. Maybe you already have one then. His expression kind of (laughs) continues to darken and he says, look, just go about whatever you're going to do here and take your money, do whatever under that, whatever foolish plan that young boy has concocted and then take your gold and find another place to stay. I'm watching you. No, of course, of course. We'll, uh, we'll let you know if we see any drow in the city. His eyes narrow as he turns back into his tavern. <laughs> Meow, he didn't seem very nice. No, he has a tummy <laughs> ache. He said so. That's, I'm fairly <laughs> sure he said that. Mm-hmm. So, Anders Solmore and the, I think he said the net from what I overheard. In that way. All right then, shall we? Why not? You seem like an interesting person. Valentine? Yes, Valentine Long Tom. Thank you very much for noticing. Though, um, well, I may be fascinating and I'll be quick to tell you about it. Uh, I can't help but notice this one seems to constantly be drowning. That's quite a trick. She can swim. Don't worry. I think it's less that she can swim and more that she is just wet. Rude. I would ask that you stand farther away from me. The <laughs> bird has an aversion to water. She doesn't like to speak of it. Hmm. I wouldn't insult my friend. You know, oh, no, it's just met. No, 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 no insult uh, meant. I just the, the bird does bite. The bird, and not you, right? Of course not. I'm as no. harmless as a kitten. Absolutely. Kittens don't like water, do they? <laughs> like I said, the bird is averse. Indeed. Let's go. You guys will um, find your way to a little tavern that is actually on stilts. The oh. edge of it butts directly to the river, you know, as the Kingfisher River, um, should you ask. It is upon the delta of the Kingfisher River and the northern shores, especially of the Sea of Swords that Salt Marsh is built. I will um, pull you all over to a little map of Salt Marsh so you can see where we are for now. <clears throat> so we load up over here is the, as you can see, the front gate down in your lower left here. Um, Moving in, you walked past what you could only assume is a barracks. You could hear, um, you could see actual cells in the yard. So they must have some type of jail or something. And right across the way was the wicker goat that you stopped at. Making your way in to the city, you walked past a small market And then over to this building here, which I am labeling the empty net. You can see that it extends almost all the way out into the water there, mostly on stilts. Um, Getting near, you can tell that this place is a little bit run down, a raucous place for fisher types and and such. You can in fact see a... um, head of a heavy morning drinker leaning out the window and expelling his first few drinks out into the Kingfisher River. A little bit of questioning, you see that while there is going to be a party here soon, you're in the wrong place. If you're looking for Solmore or information about him, um, the more wealthy types often, more often hang out at the Snapping Line, a nicer tavern over across the bridge. Crossing it, 
This is a very wide bridge, um, impressively built. There are shops and homes that decorate each side. And Inaris, as you start to walk over it, you feel this sense of malaise and vertigo wash over your body. You start to look from side to side. It's that feeling of, I need to vomit, where can I go? But it passes just a bit and you don't. But you just continue feeling busy or uh, feeling dizzy, a bit unsettled and continue across this bridge full of buildings, shops, and such. We now cut and go beneath the bridge where Moira, you have arrived back in Saltmarsh after receiving a strange note during your travels. Nether, you are sitting and listening to the sounds above, the clack of the stones above, or the clack of the wagon wheels on the cobblestones of the bridge above, the many conversations, listening to the river lap and the many scurrying feet and the familiar sounds all around you. When another unexpected sound comes to your ear, the heavy passing feet of guards, armored and clanking, their mail tinkling beneath, there is a confident but light, dexterous footfall coming your way around the back under the bridge to where you make your home. As Moira rounds the corner to Nether's little place beneath the bridge, what does she see? Nether is a tiefling. Oh. She's got very, very pale skin and um, gray hair. Your voice got some weird myself. sound going on there, <laughs> Sean. Oh, how does it sound? Very deep. Do I have the wrong thing on? Like, like James I think Earl you have Jones. the wrong one on. <laughs> deep and echoey. While Sean's fixing that, massive thank you to Buddy. There we go. That'll be better. Uh, massive thank you to Buddy who's donated twenty dollars. I have a couple of healing potions on me. Level one, you might need it. Oh, thank thanks, you, buddy. guys. We're gonna. Thanks, Buddy. Right, yeah, everyone, bear with me as I deal with new technology. But anyway, so this is Nether's voice. She sees a tiefling, gray skin uh, or very pale skin and gray hair. Uh, the first, the the front bangs of which are um, a deep blue. Um, she uh, is scrambling for um, a, uh, a blindfold because her eyes are uh, constantly luminescent, like just two little dots of light in the midst of darkness. And she's reaching for it to quickly bind her, uh, her eyes. Um, she's about 14 years old, maybe uh, somewhere between um, four um, and a half and four and a quarter feet tall. She... Uh, wears very simple shrift and a skirt, um, and she's wrapped in um, a few tattered pieces of old um, fishing nets, sort of like a shawl, and the uh, shawls each have you know, shells, maybe bits and pieces of broken glass, um, various things sort of woven in, in amongst them, and she has a small sort of uh, walking stick slash staff which she sort of brings up and holds in front of her defensively. You recognize this figure who rounds the corner, though, as your friend, Moira. Mariah. You're floating waters around. <laughs> Mariah, is that you? Hello. And while, I hate to jump in here, and while <laughs> Nether cannot see Mariah, as Nether is um, visually blind, um, those who saw Mariah kind of take the little side passage down 
under the bridge would, uh, could you describe who they see? Certainly. Um, quite tall, a um, couple, maybe a foot and a half taller than her friend Nether, um, with uh, very tanned skin, haven't been out in the sun many, many years, um, thick auburn hair tied back in a braid. Um, she wears a very long black overcoat over um, comfortable clothing, leather boots. Um, and she carries, um, aside from sort of the usual pack of someone who moves around a lot, she's got a dark medium-sized case slung over her back and a uh, drum uh, strapped to her belt. You got in trouble, dear. Well, you know me? Yeah. And I wonder, why are you back so soon? Because someone came and ran and told me you were in trouble. Well, I'm fine. Uh, As you can see, nothing has changed. I'm perfectly happy and content here in my little hole. Hmm. What'd you do with the money I left you? Well, spent it all on rum and doxies, of course. You couldn't get a little more creative with that. Well, do you want the truth, or do you want to feel good about leaving me alone? You know I would rather hear the truth from you. Well, that it was, didn't last a day before it was stolen from me, as usual. People know that you're kind, the folk in town like me. When you're around, they expect you to give money to us, and when you leave, they come and take it. I, um, softly step my way closer. I know she hears me, but there's a little part of me that hopes maybe I can actually sneak up on her. And, um, I kneel down in front of her and put my hand out, touch her shoulder. I'm sorry. I know it was a short time, but it felt like so long. Whatever the fuck is going on here, I'm gonna fix it, okay? I don't know, things have... Things have changed recently, Mariah. I'm... I'm scared. It's okay. We'll solve it, alright? I got you. Around then, after you give these words of assurance, Nether, you hear heavy boots deviate from the typical path. They don't end the thump and hit the clack as you're so used to as people come from the dirt onto the cobblestone that makes up the bridge. No, these go from the dirt to the squish and come down the wet way towards where you are. Two heavy pairs of boots and another instrument, something maybe like pikes, thumping pole arms like yours. I'm certainly popular today. And M Mariah, you see as two um, guards clad in pretty simple chainmail, holding pikes, make their way down towards Nether's little home. Hey, Scrapes! Scrapes you down there, sister. Well, you know me. Always happy to stay out of sight. Not causing any trouble. Oh, company. Who's... Mm. I've seen you about before. Oh, boys. Right. And the kind of guy shakes his head. He actually takes off um, his helm and kind of tucks under his arm and says, right, no. I'm sorry, I don't really want to have to do this, Scrapes. And never been any trouble to me. And really, I don't, you know, blame you for what happened a few weeks back, but there's been some important people in town, you see, and, you know... What you do to the bridge, the elves, they just, I just think they can't stand anymore. Personally, I don't care much 
and I wouldn't mind if there weren't any elves around here and you could just keep catching your rats and just stay under the bridge. It's fine by me. But, see, there's bigger people here now, and, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just having to do my job and tell you that you're going to have to leave pretty soon. Would it help if I explain that the bridge thing had nothing to do with me? Well, That's always been here? Really? I'm not doing anything on purpose. Well, I don't know any just... about anything about that. That's kind of above me. It's just you see the important lady cross the bridge and fell awful, looks down and sees, well, you. And you can understand her getting a little, you know, uppity about it. And she's meant to, you know, find fabrics and such. It's a nice shop, supposed to set up, based out of Waterdeep. And I mean, we just can't have, like I said, I'm sorry, it's way above me. I just have to tell you that you only got a couple days here. Well, then we'll now, take it to the people who are above you and we'll fix it. <laughs> I know you're doing your job. Look, this, this is pretty decided, you know, but look, I could get in a lot of trouble for saying this and he walks up and he says, but that, um, well, you should have seen that Soulmore kid at the last uh, council meeting. <laughs> Usually he's just right under Prime Water's thumb doing whatever he tells him. He's just, you know good little boy carrying on the merchant fleet but with the most recent successes he's had he's got a well he's got a strong head so i think well he's probably the least practical of all of them which means you'll probably be able to persuade him if anyone mm. so well i just have to leave the bridge right i don't i don't have to leave salt marsh Well, what if she stays with me? <laughs> On where are you going to stay? Wherever I can pay for. Or wherever they let me stay. They're usually nice to me here. I don't know. Nice. Orders are to, you know, they say there's some down in Thornhold, you know, it's a military port and there's a lot of issues with the, the grains and stuff coming through there. Lots of rats, you know. You, you can. That's. I, I thought maybe. Do you think I got that's a cousin. why I stay in Saltmarsh for the rats, for the work. Well, I stay here because that's the only place I know. I'm I know soft. every street. I know every corner. Hey, hey. You're not leaving, okay? Okay. I pull her close. It's gonna be alright. Pack up your stuff. We're gonna find some place comfy. What's your name? I look at the guard. Erig. All right, Erig. Thank you for doing your job. Um, don't be a stranger. Nice people are nice to have around. Like right? I said, I, I'm I'm really sorry about all of this. I know. But it's, I didn't. It's too bad I didn't find you today. Couldn't couldn't hand you this here letter, but. Uh, Probably someone a hell of a lot more competent than us two here gonna come looking pretty soon, unless someone does something. So, uh, you know, scrapes. It's not like a letter would have helped me. I was gonna read it to you, but you know, the law of the land now. You know those Neverwinter people. If you don't do it the right way with the letters. Yes, yes. If you don't do it the right way, they go right and up your ass. stamps and such. They do, right? You know what I'm talking about. I know God, exactly damn, what you're why talking are those people about. That's be... why I don't live there anymore. Yeah, all over us. Man, it's just... Like I said, I'm just trying... Just trying to do my thing. The only thing I know how to do, and I don't like it when it's this, so... Scrapes! Good luck. I'll, uh... Say I couldn't find you. And he kind of turns around and starts to puts on his helmet and starts to make his way back up the bridge. I don't 
don't think they're gonna believe him when he says they couldn't find me. It's not like I no. go anywhere else. He's not exactly a good liar. Do you think of that now, or can we wait until it's darker? You wanna wait till there's less people around? Well... There's the thing, and Nether holds out her hand over the water and shows you once again that she casts neither shadow nor reflection. Yeah. Tends to weird people out. Does. I mean, boring people. I think it's kind of cool, but that's just me. I mean, there's other places in town that I could stay or hide. Let me do my usual and try to make it up to you, okay? You stay with me tonight, and forever long I'm here, okay? All right. I don't know. Do you think he's serious about other people coming like, soon? Should we should we leave now? I don't know. There's a lot that's going on that I don't really understand, but you know, whispers of movement and interest. I, I could go hide up uh, under the empty net. I know a place there. Well, look, I just got here, so I'm um really fucking hungry. And I need a drink. <laughs> Please, um, go and eat. Don't oh, let my uh, uh, troubles uh, 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 worry uh, 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 you. I'm no, only going to be taken away no. from everything I've ever known my entire life. Uh, 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 uh. I, uh, I grab whatever stuff she's got on the floor and, like, pull it together into a sack and push it into her hands. And then grab her by the scruff of her neck and start dragging her towards a bar. <laughs> um, nether protests, but not enough to stop you. And for whatever reason, whether or not it's just the day, the way the wind is blowing, you decide you want something a little nicer and make your way across, you know, up the hill, across the bridge, towards the snapping line. Prion. Or is it Prion? I forget. I, we talked about it like a minute ago. <laughs> oh, I had the <laughs> Prion, probably. You have come into town. You have heard from so many how good the fishing is here. And for you, from a, a, a village that is really just a collection of shacks down near Thornhold, the fish have dwindled. There's something about the the navy ships, the tar that they cast, the way that they just dump their waste so freely right on top of even the reefs where the best fish would gather has made the place a bit more barren. Catch a meal, perhaps, but no way to make a living as a fisherman. Not down there. The bigger families have expanded their waters, bullied others out. But salt marsh. You've heard there's no end to the fish there. One can kind of start anew, make a make a good living. So you've come to salt marsh, and you make your way down to the docks, but one after another turns you away. Full up, full crew, full enable, or fine, not looking to split the cut. And finally, you make your way all the way north to the docks with probably the best view of the sea, the most recently built as well. <clears throat> and a tired looking man rubs his eyes standing at the end of this dock as sailors on the other end, loading cargo in and out of a three-masted sailing vessel with a unusually wide berth. 
You stop in front of him and he looks you up and down. What does he see as Prion approaches? Um, he sees a young half-elf with skin tin, tinged with blue. Um, he's armoured like a warrior type. Um, in his backpack, you can see attached to it is uh, netting, loads of, loads of different netting and fishing tackle stuff. And in his hand, he's carrying um, a trident. Uh, also on his back, he's got a, a shield. Long, dark brown hair, a neat beard, same color, and piercing blue eyes. One of those waterkin, he asks. He nods. Mm. I. Your people are handy. That's for sure. Don't have to be so quick about tossing out a line when one of you goes overboard. <laughs> but, uh, well, what are you looking for here? Um, I'm looking to set up my own place. <laughs> set your own? Excuse eventually. Me? Eventually, I. Eventually, right. Um, there, um, there is, um, well, you realize that this place is controlled by the, the council, right? There's some, most of these docks, these families have been here for, they've been here for generations. I'm just looking to start. That's all. Well, right. You got what you got? You got a sea chest? You got some you got some coin to what are you looking to rent a dock? I'm looking to earn some coin first. Maybe right. for a few years. For a few right. Well interesting place to start. Well, but I've heard the fishing's good here. Oh, fishing's great. That's why they're not going to let you fish in their waters. It's not so simple as that. Not anymore, at least. It's expensive territory. So, look. I, I'll do a little favor for you. My, the uh, head of our company here, um, the master of the house, old, uh, the young, the young Anders is, is looking for some people. Um, might be just, might earn you just the coin you're looking for. All right, sounds good. I heard it pays well, but um, it's can you kind of puts his fists out. Or you hold yourself in a fight and everything. Aye, I can fight. Looks like it. Yeah, yeah good. Well, you might need it. Um, fight and take a hit. I hope. Um, sounds like it's dangerous work. Um, he hasn't really sent the details out to anyone. It's kind of a no questions asked kind of thing. So, um, but don't 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 don't, don't tell anyone you heard that from me. Um, but. Uh, well, it's hard to get an audience with Anders himself, but um, I've heard that he's put out some, some notice and that uh, some of those that are looking to, um, well, do a kind of no-questions-asked job are gathering over at the, uh, at the uh, snapping line. I'd head that way. Thank you. Let me heads off. All right. So he's a little bit pissed off that he started copying his accent. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> um. So soon enough, one by one, the six of you filter in to a quaint little inn known as the Snapping Line. Those smaller than the others and in fact some of the furnishing is not quite as fancy everything here is neatly arranged the tables are wiped down it's clean and just generally comfortable it's nice here there's uh, only just a single woman um, tending the bar for now and uh, she identifies herself as the owner and invites you all to sit. The moment being sort of a weird time in the day, it is only the six of you. And 
sort of a um, awkward silence permeates the inn among a blind tiefling, a parent drow, a <laughs> human, a water genasi, a tabaxi, and what must be some type of half elf. Who's the human? Heather is cowering behind Mariah. Just, she's <laughs> never been allowed in this um, in this establishment. She's she's been under it many times, but she's never been allowed in it. She feels extremely exposed. Any silence is quite audibly broken by my need to either whistle or hum at all times. <laughs> You've got to roleplay that. <laughs> no, okay, you can stop that now. I was like, no, never stop. <laughs> <laughs> and Come on, now there, just take a seat. What's the name of the person who owns this? I would probably know. Yes, um, her name is Hannah Rist. And it, you said this is not an establishment that you typically go to, as it is nicer and kind of across the oh. bridge from where you are. Yeah. She uh, never knows that people have ad adverse reaction to her wherever she goes. Uh, yeah. So she tends to go where people aren't. Um, being out during the day is uh, is a big thing for her. Too. Sure. Well, Hannah, Hannah Rist is the proprietor. Um, a younger woman with uh, dark skin and um, kind of a w sort of wild, curly black hair. But she has a kind voice. Um, though a bit distracted, she um, maybe recognizes you and is a bit taken aback that you come in, but does not um, b protest at all and uh, brings you all um, food and such, should you wish it. I think, Mariah, you said you were looking for some food and drink specifically. So. Desperately, yes. <laughs> you have heard there is a very strange beverage that they oh. serve here. It's I'm called ready. claw wine, which is more of a distilled spirit. All you know that it is made from potatoes and probably the leftover claws and other bits from lobsters. Fascinating. I will have one. I will probably have two, but I should start with one. <laughs> <laughs> it comes in a nice little cordial glass, and it is strange <laughs> to have... There's a nice little sweetness to it before it burns, but the sweetness is less of a fruity sweetness and more of a sort of um, shellfish... Mm -hmm. White shellfish meat sweetness, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is yeah, very confusing right. the first couple times you have it. But once you get used to it, it's actually quite pleasant and one of the easiest and quickest ways to get drunk in salt marsh. Tastes like decay. <laughs> uh, Don't be so shellfish. Hello. <laughs> hmm. After a bit um, serving here, you see a man walk in the door with an imperious look on his face. Hands clasped behind his back, he methodically looks at each one of you. you his eyes are incredibly piercing and you are almost um, taken aback by you just get the sense that just by a couple seconds looking at each of you, he has an understanding of who each of you are. Right then. Ooh. So. You're the ones who have answered Master's call. Yes. I've heard of your plight. Sister Scrapes. And I'm happy to inform you that our good master Anders Solmor is sympathetic to your cause. He is a sway vote on the council, as you know, and could vouch for you. Do I recognize this voice, Ian? Yes. You would know this as Scarin Wave Chaser. He is the butler to Anders Solmor. 
he has been in salt marsh as long as you can remember. And Mariah, so back so soon. I don't know, always. But, you know, I figured it was time that I maybe help out a little. Hmm. Quite. Right. The six of you should do. Oh, the whole crew. Hello, everyone. <laughs> working with them. You're all going think... to be working together, yes. I'm sorry. What is he talking about? Uh, there are some other people in here, and they all look a little weird. <laughs> Thanks. Speak for yourself. Thank you. Oh, I definitely include myself in that. No worries. <laughs> I was just going to say, what is that fascinating creature you have behind you, my dear? Oh, this is Nether. Nether? Rhymes with leather. I, I like, like that. Well, nether, nether rhymes with leather. And, um, does anyone know that uh, blue-tinged, net-encrusted gentleman over there? Well, you shouldn't be that rude. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, my good man, uh, what is your name? You with the beard? Prion. Ah, Prion. Pleasure. Yeah. And you? Ah, Valentine Longtop. Very good. That's the kind of name I need to write a song about. He sounds very fancy. Well, thank that's you. pretty fancy. He's got a bird on his shoulder. Yes, that's he's, bird. He's also dangerous. He's a threat. And well, so that, is the bird. Well, not easy. He's a bird bites, mm -hmm. I mind you. But I imagine so does he. friend there, she... Huh. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> okay. See? All right. Threat. Pause for a Death. moment. We'll continue later. Oh, pause right, for the DM. Uh, we lose lose someone? Uh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody pause. Uh, I the mean, DM. hi. I, I would have ah. run away. Yeah, pun. <laughs> all right. So he it. looks between all of you and says, "Right, have we made introductions? Got this pretense out of the way." Pretense. If we're gonna be working together. My master has a tight real. schedule. You see. Know, if you would please master. come with me. And your masters would be Anders Solmore. Yes. Oh. I see. Oh. Well, we best be getting off then, and I quickly down the rest of my drink, off. grab my case and my bag, and grab Nether, <laughs> push her out the door. Nether was just reaching for a glass of the of the claw wine. And just... <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, an older man, probably late fifties, but moves in a surprisingly spry manner as he um, wheels about and um, marches out the door. Talise, Daenerys, do we follow? I suppose so. If there's an opportunity to make gold, then I guess that's what we'll do. And if she says I... so, then that's what we do. Okay. Come along before I take all the gold for myself. Rude. Prion's already following. <laughs> <laughs> Mar Mariah, we're, we're doing this so that, that Anders Solmore will, will speak on beh my behalf on the council? You think he'd really yeah. do that? He seems like a weird fellow, probably. Or at least we could convince him. I don't trust any of those folk. We don't have to trust him. I have something important to tell you, but it can wait. I've got a couple things I need to ask you as well, but... We'll sort ourselves out, see where the uh, pieces lie on the board and such. Scarin leads you up a hillside to a manor complex. Hmm. Nice looking home, um, showing some age. It is in fact probably the second largest home in the town. Some buildings which are obviously warehouses or serve a more public function may be larger, but as far as homes, clearly this is one of the more preeminent in town. He leads you inside past a couple guards. There's 
no gate. Uh, most of the manors you've seen here too, while they have seem to be employ private guards and um, family guards and such aren't uh, really fortresses and more of manor complexes. So you can freely walk into the courtyard and you see a couple other types of sub buildings aside from the main manor, a private stable, what must be a guard bunkhouse, um, some other uh, little storehouses and such. But he leads you straight into the home. Um, you immediately smell hardwood, the hardwood furnitures inside, many of which seem to be either newly constructed or bought. It is comfortable. There are cushions on all the seats. A fire burns in the corner. He takes you aside to a drawing room and says, Master Solma will be with you soon. Please sit. Indicating a table. He leaves for a moment, returns very soon, and places a um, plate of apples on the table. Well, don't want to seem like an apple, so grab one. Oh, wow. That was really brave of you to just eat somebody's apples and, you know, they didn't tell you that you should and it's this weird place and you don't know if they've been poisoned or, you know. They're was mealy. so brave. See? Yeah. T tosses the apple back into the room somewhere. <laughs> they're, they're probably poisoned. Hmm. I'll catch it with Mage Hand and put it back on the table. Anaris, I get now. We, now, we get to watch. <laughs> And you know, you know, while I have a stroke, we get to watch and see if he dies. What? I mean, good well, point. You just ate a poisoned apple. No, well, I mean, it was bad enough to be poisoned, but trust me, that wasn't poisoned. No, we don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on you for a bit, little kitty cat. Does the prospect of someone potentially dying excite you? No, nope, just interesting. Those are not too far apart. <laughs> Okay. Don't insult my friend, please. <laughs> oh, I'm not insulting. I'm just observing. Anaris, your friend seems like kind of a drip. Rude. That is not very nice. Oh. I don't like it when people are not nice to my companions. Well, apologies. <laughs> Bird, do you hear that? You gotta be nice. Apologies. Oh, this one's got a tail to spin. It's just gonna keep going on and on, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm Never having trouble following this conversation. Could, maybe I'm missing something? Um, he's a cat. Oh. Oh, no, it's tabaxi, isn't it? Thank you, Th yes. Is that a kind of cat? Yes. Um, it is a race of cat people yes. who follow the god Khajiit, but, uh, you can just call me Valentine. Another? I think I might have mentioned that. You, no, you did. You did. In fact, uh, your lovely friend here mentioned it. Your name was Mariah? Just nice to meet you. Ah, yes. And then there's Prion, and of course, I've been traveling with these two individuals. They're quite lovely. It's been going uh, well for you? I'm alive. Great. <laughs> I notice you have a case upon your back, and you mentioned tails earlier. Tails. Uh huh. huh? What? You said you that you would write a tale. tale about me. Is that not? Um, oh, a song, not yes. a tale. So when, see, with the actual tales in the room, you know, I got stuck on one word and not the other. Um, no, I um, I'll pull the case off my back, set it down on the table and open it up. And um, inside there is um, old and well-loved would be the appropriate uh, descriptor, um, a fiddle made of blue wood. And the, um, I, the top of it looks as if it's been carved in the same way that um, the prow of a ship might be. 
instead of just the sort of swooping design at the top, there's a kind of angelic figure um, that the tombing knobs are uh, set in. She's really very good. Just lovely. Yeah, it's nice. I play a few instruments, do a little singing, and you know, it's it's part of how I manage to get from town to town without having to spend too much money. Or rather, I spend too much money and then I make it back. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yes, yes. Hard to live a good life. Yeah. Makes it a little easier. So you seem to know the town a bit better, or at least have a passing familiarity with that, the barkeep and the um, the tightwad we were chatting with earlier. A little you, more. Anything um, you can tell us about uh, Mr. Anders? So, uh, I, I could tell another, you Nether probably knows more than I do. I just sort of bop in and out. Pray do tell, little one. Well, he's, he's a young man. Um, he's on the council. He's like everyone else, his family owns shipping boats. Um, I think he's pretty important on the council, actually. And, um, well, he lives in this house, I suppose. I've never been inside it, but I've been by it many times. Um, him and, and his butler, who we already met. Yes. And as far as far as I know, this is the first time he's ever directly spoken to me. But I've I've overheard him speaking in other places. I, yes, I, I apologize. He said his name, and I was immediately filled with the image of wanting to beat him to death with my shoe. Um, is Wave, wave, wave Crasher? Wave Crasher? Chaser? Chaser. Chaser. What else do I know about Anders Solmore? Is that about the long and the short of it? Um, yeah, so he is by far the youngest person to ever hold a council seat, uh, partial do directly in uh, as the result of the untimely death of his mother. Would it be appropriate to say he's the most eligible bachelor in town? Absolutely, <laughs> without it, without it, <laughs> I will, I will, without I will definitely, definitely mention that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, I was told a little bit about this job. It's going to be dangerous. Maybe not a place yeah. for a child. No offense. She'll be fine. Okay. You're going to be fine. Not a child. Oh. oh my apologies. Well, you are. We. You look. You look young. Look who's talking. And like, Meow. Valentine pulls himself up to his full like six foot five height. Just like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you see his hair a little bit. Be careful not to drop any string. <laughs> Um, about this time, the door <laughs> opens, is pulled open, and striding into the room is a very young man dressed in finery. He has a broad smile on his face and just this sort of general air of levity about him as he comes in and looks and... Hello! Hi! Hello, everyone! Uh, oh, what, did I interrupt? Were you playing some music? I was showing them my instrument, but, um... It's Anders. Yes, it is. Um, oh, sorry, how rude ahead. of you. Yes, um, Anders Solmore. Hello, uh, welcome, to, welcome to my home. Um, so these are the... And he looks over the shoulder. Skirin is just closing the door um, and slipping inside of the room kind of quietly. Uh, and as he... These are the ones... Skirin gives it... <laughs> quick nod. like, right! So... You are, really? Yes, cool, great. You're the ones, I guess, um, that are gonna help me out with the thing, yeah? I, Sounds I, like it. I can pay really, really well. Um, I've done really well for myself lately. Um, I don't know if you heard, but you know, 
all of the other families in town. We were buying the boats from this particular shipwright, and he made the hull way too wide and way too thick. And they're kind of they're kind of slower, and they were meant for you know fishing, taking in sort of uh, larger loads. And I don't really know the rest of it, but um, I decided that I decided to keep them because why send them back? You know, like the other families did. And turns out that was right about the time that the dwarves started send you know hauling hauling marble out from their repair of Gontelgrim. Turns out something really awful happened to Elturel way down there. And so they need so much marble right now because, you know, they're really like devout and stuff. So they like need so much marble and my ships can carry a bunch of marble blocks. And then anyway, it was really smart. I made a lot of money and things are really going great. And now I need to earn a little bit of um, favor more with this community and with the, um, with the council and such, you know, they don't, see me as legit or you know know what i'm doing so just trying to um you know up my uh my, my stature a bit yeah and he kind of looks over his shoulder to scare and kind of just nods um anyway uh so here's the thing there's this house about four miles north up on the coast it's on a little bit of a promontory. It probably has like really great views. It sounds nice, but it's kind of bad news, I've heard. Um, it's, I don't know why no one really has done anything about it for so long, but I think that time has um, stopped. I mean, there could be all sorts of awful things in there, right? Like, um, you know, like smugglers. I mean, Yes, horrible, horrible smugglers could be I mean, holding up in there. Yeah, that would be just, so horrible. They, all of them just need to be brought to justice, you know? I mean, skirting around the laws like that, and, you know, my... Dreadful. My poor, and he looks over the, his shoulder again, this time up to a large sort of life-size portrait of what you can only assume is his late mother, and he says, I, you know, I, she... You know, decided she formed a coalition to try and root out some of the rings in here. Look what they did to her. She's Painting. gone way too soon. So they, I'm sorry, they did something to her. She's, they killed her. Yeah. When? Well, I mean, we found her only. I was about three years ago now, right? And he looks back to Scarin and he says, three days, or three years, four months, <laughs> six days. I'll never forget it. Worst day of my life. At the risk of sounding morose, where did they find your mother? And why do you think it was smugglers? Well, she was clearly poisoned. And that's their trade, you know? That's how they operate. The end. Thieves and ne'er-do-wells. All be brought to justice. Locked up in a cell where they all belong. DM, may I make an insight check based on what his butler, Scarin, just said? Worst day of his life? Sure. Not the most perceptive for people, but we'll see. So this is insight? Insight. Mm -hmm. Can I aid in that? There will be no way for you guys to sort of compare oh notes, God. so to speak, at <laughs> the moment. Um, unless you want to make a run. Hey, do you think he's telling the truth? Which I this is a lie. Do, 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 I make this, run. do I need this at sure. a disadvantage for being blind, or is this one that I can make normally? Uh, you can do it. You, you're used to um, discerning intentions and such from people's voices, so okay, that's fine. Mm. Nah. Just a nine. Twenty-four for me. Oh goodness Before, gracious! Great roll. Uh, another. It seems. It seems sincere, what he says. Um. You. Uh, pick up Prion that as he is reciting the days and such, it's less of 
though he says it mournfully, he is very um, businesslike, and it's almost like it's a reaction to Anders frequently asking, how long ago was that that Mother died? And so it's almost like a snap reaction in his head. It was exactly this many, this, you know, yeah. much time, and it was terrible. And he agrees it was terrible, and it's, you can tell that he's probably doing a lot of extra work now that this young kid is the head of the family. Yeah, that's what and I was so picking up. While he certainly um, seems to mourn it, he's also just kind of has this t general irritation of the young lord. Okay. Hmm. So this while house that may or... Oh, I'm so sorry. Please, go ahead. <laughs> All right. While, um, while they're talking, can I... Uh, Inaris would be glancing around the room to see if she notices anything out of place, anything weird, any traps. I'm sure you can make a perception check. <laughs> any snipers in the rafters. The apples look particularly suspect. <laughs> They're sus. Super sus. They're totally going to shoot us. The apples? Yes, the apples. Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> snipers. In the rafters. Snipers. 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 Dirty 20. Oh. Uh, you look about and everything seems perfectly sound. Um, you can tell there are a couple other people maybe moving upstairs. Um, you can hear guards see a couple shadows pass in front of the windows. But um, nothing al seems alarming to you. It seems like a regular uh, meeting. And as you finish your look around, carefully taking in every bit he also notices a very wealthy home. And the last thing you do is you kind of tally up all of the valuables in here and can see that he is indeed made quite a fortune for himself very recently. And as your check finishes, your scan of the room finishes, you can't help but stop on Scarin, who is making direct eye contact with you. <laughs> it seems as if he yeah, recognizes more than anything when someone sizes up a room. As soon as you see him looking at you, his eyes dart elsewhere. I'll just smirk and I'll motion to Talise. Like if I hear, if I heard two people upstairs, I would just sort of hold up two fingers and just put my hand back down. And Talise sort of nods, which then sends her hair rippling. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I've kind of grown attached to it, don't you think? You are literally attached to it. Ah, <laughs> so there's a house that may or may not be full of smugglers that are horrible, horrible or people. ghosts, or ghosts. Oh, smuggler ghosts. Yeah, I. Uh, that was just the thing that. Well, supposed to. you see, there's this. No one really goes there. That's why it's supposed to be kind of. There's rumors that this guy used to live there who did all of these experiments and stuff, and there were pretty nasty kind of stuff. Um, so before we just burn it to the ground, you know, we want to see if it can be used for something and want to make sure we're not doing anything, you know, evil or something like that. So we need someone to go clear out the house because that rock is also, it'd be a great spot for a lookout. It has great view of the sea all around. It's really great. Um, good house. Great. Probably Come a really on. nice view from the bedroom. Uh, uh, how Which is we always talking, important. Sir? Awkward turn of phrase there. Um, all right, so ghost smugglers or smugglers of ghosts. Smuggler ghosts. Uh, right. Um, honestly, where is the house? Oh, it's, it's four, four miles, miles on, on the, the coast. coast. Yeah, there's a road uh, path leading up there, but it's probably pretty rough. To you, uh, to you, sir, um, I am able to offer each of you, if you can clear it out in complete, in, in completion, and make sure that there is nothing there. It is worth the Solmore family 50 gold apiece for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> you what? must be joking. Isn't that right? He kind of looks up <laughs> over his shoulder and scaring nods. Yeah. If we yeah. find any. Yeah, why not? 50 gold. If we find anything interesting inside, can we keep it? I mean, not if it's like a person. No, of course, but like Idiot. stuff. Excuse me, what? Things. Something, Treasure. Yeah. Things that are useful. 
or value oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he something would, but anyway I, i'm sure i'm I sure he I'm wouldn't sure mind I, uh matter of care about any of that that's not something to shut up um so with the whole house how big is this house um it's two and a half st- Stories I've heard those kind of slumping as of late, so who really knows? Um, and I mean, it's a nice sized manor. I mean, not so, a castle, right? Right, right. So, a, a house that size, imagining the amount of people or ghosts or smugglers who might infest it, this could be quite the ordeal to clear it out. And oh, 50 gold, wow, a generous sum, just doesn't quite seem. Uh, well, truly, maybe some hazard pay of some sort, or, uh... Uh... He has a point. Um, he kind of <laughs> looks over to, uh, looks over his shoulder towards Skarin, um, and then he just kind of tilts his head to the side. Um, make a persuasion check. Mm-hmm. I have got inspiration, remember? Oh, I do, I do, I do. Let me... Did that go yet? Yeah, yeah it's a 13. Hey. All right, well then, I will do it again, just to see. So I'll burn my inspiration. All right, then. And so, ooh, it's... Yep, nope, the 13 is what it's going to be. 13 or a 5. <laughs> he... Go with a 13. I, but I don't imagine that'll be that. I think that the, the, the 50 is really, really more than generous. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money. It sounds good. I, I have no issues it's a it's a tremendous amount of money yeah, but, but uh, mr solomore uh, i'm sorry i am um, wait hang on the, the creepiest no two more. people here are like talking over each other who's uh, so you... <laughs> I, 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 i'll be <laughs> oh poor nether it's like waiting in line at the hot topic <laughs> yes uh um, drow lady, yeah. Okay. Did he say drow? Yep. Wow. <laughs> you expect all of us, a blind child, to fight, if I heard correctly, ghost smugglers for a mere 50 gold apiece. Seems a bit low. You guys have a really interesting way of hearing things. I'm going to just throw that right out there. Um, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> just Debatable. Oh, you know, that's, that's, uh, le- that's taking it a bit far, I think. Um, you know, it's pretty idiotic is a, uh, um, a race known for their slaughter of good aligned creatures to be wandering around alone in a uh, common city like this. That doesn't sound very smart. However, um, here you are, my guest. So that was pretty rude. Um, I agree. You're not safe here. 50 gold is as, more than But generous. as long as you're my guest, you'll be fine. So, great. And 50 gold and ghost... I, I didn't say anything about ghost smugglers. So this house, it's, it's sitting there the way it is. We're... Some people are worried it could be used by them, but the real problem and the reason no one has done anything about it is because it's haunted. Maybe. Maybe had some terrible experiments done in the basement in it sometime, but uh, that's the that's the rumor. So, yeah. And that sounds totally fine. Um, if we were to perhaps run into something that required follow-up or other action that needed your stamp of approval. I'm sure we could come back and talk about further collaborative opportunities. That, um... It's, of course, entirely dependent on what we find inside. Sure. Just to be clear, I'm... He looks over his shoulder again. I'm I'm paying you to clear out the house, to just yes. you know, to investigate it, and if there's something yeah. to deal with it, yeah. We will deal with it. And, okay. and anything we kill out. is a finder's fee, eh? We, Within we, reason, we keep I what mean, we kill. you know, uh, stolen goods should be returned to their rightful owners. This is a law-abiding town, after oh, all. Oh, we, don't, of course. we don't steal, we don't smuggle here. Nope, not even a little bit. No. Man, when, it's good when can we start? Those damned oh. villains. 
No, um, start right away. You what can go time of day is anytime. It? It's um just about. You guys had a bit of a lunch, and it is you have plenty of day to walk up and get started on the haunted house. All I have is a mealy apple. I turn to the group. If there are two ghost kids there, I'm fucking leaving. <laughs> Um, play with us. Shall we? Um, um, Mr. Mr. Solmore. Yes, um, s scrapes, yeah? Is uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that's a lot of money, and I, I will help as best I can. Um, it seems a little odd that, that you requested me, but, um, I was wondering if maybe instead of the gold, I... I Apparently, I'm in a bit of trouble, and um, I've been told I can't stay where I've been staying anymore, and I would really like to. Do you think maybe, I, I don't know, if, if if I do this job that, that you'd put a good word for in, in for me? Oh, right. That was the, um, you were the, she, she was, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know what Galen ha is up to with all of that. So, um, I, I mean, it would just mean a lot to me that if, if you would speak on my behalf, if the opportunity arise, is... well, if, you know, if you do well, and people who do good work for me, I prove themselves to be, you know, upstanding members of the, of the, uh, Solmore company. I mean, we can't have those type of people being pushed out of town now, can we? That sounds good. Thanks. Hey, DM. Yeah. That's a clarifying question. I'm I'm fine. I'm finally putting a first name and a last name together. Uh, Gellin Primewater is the head of the town. Yes. Gellin Primewater is a member of the council. The member of the council. And the cat. Like, so the council is all like they're equal to each other, and they just yes. have like di different. Um, you guys would know that the um, at least just being in town, um, Nether would know the council is now five members um five the fifth edition is recent actually um it was originally four for really for generations um the members i will uh post in chat as well just so you get this down are ada oland gellen primewater anders solmore Eliander Fireborn, and the newest member of the council, recently appointed, is Manistrad Copperlocks. Ow. That's Dang. a name. Good name. Uh, Prone addresses the, uh, um, the man. He says, uh, um, a Sir or Lord? Or what do we call you? Do you... Um, uh, well... I guess uh, Mr. Solmore is oh. technically how you should address uh, me. Mr. Solmore, the, um, the, the little one's name is uh, is Nether, not Scraps or Scrapes. Oh, uh, that's all right. Um, I have, it's, uh, everyone calls me Scrapes. Yes, Nether. It, oh. it is Nether, though. Well, my, my apologies, um, Nether. Um, huh. Interesting. Did you did you know that? And uh, um, uh, the uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, Scarin nods, kind of, and says, "My apologies. Well, maybe yeah. soon everyone will know your name." I think you could just go back to the way they were. That's fine with me. Don't want any trouble. Shall we? I'm happy to be of use if people have me. But that's a really good attitude. Um, I like useful people. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, go, uh, figure out the, uh, haunted, uh, haunted house, I guess? Absolutely. Great. That would be awesome. I would love that. And I'll pay you! Yes! So, as discussed, that... as promised. Sounds wonderful. Is that all least... we... And he looks over to Scarin, who nods. He's like, I guess that's all we need to do. So, um... No written contract? Just... Just a verbal agreement. Oh, sure. a, a gentleman's agreement is all we need. Yeah, right? I mean, you do the job, I pay you. That's kind of how it works around here. I'm, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not into all of that kind of, you know, 
uh, never wintered Lord's Alliance legalese. Though I've got nothing against the Lord's Alliance, though. They do plenty plenty of good work. They've kept us plenty safe at times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As pain oh. as they can be. Shall we, ladies? Valentine? Okay. Feel free right. to take an apple on your way out. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. Nether okay. searches around for the apples. <laughs> I, I'm not to one her way. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Puts it in a pouch. <laughs> All right, um, and you are left to um, leave the Solmore Estate. So, um, I know. I, I just uh, with um, Nether. So there's some there's some tieflings that sort of have an exotic grace and beauty. Um, Nether is not one of those. Uh, she is, uh, has a, the sort of curved legs that have sort of akin to a, a satyr, cloven feet, um, and a very, very pronounced uh, brow of horns, and of course the uh, preternaturally pale skin and hair. Um, and she walks with uh, a little bit of a, a limp, and she leans on her, uh, her staff, and as she does, there's a... <laughs> as she walks, and that is the scrapes. Ah, oh, that's what she's going But still, her name is, is not Scrapes. It's neither. No, it's, it's neither, but that's... We're gonna fix that. Go one. <laughs> Good luck. I thought that was a rather interesting negotiating tactic where you insult the person who's giving you a job. That's, that's bold. I've never quite seen that pulled off. I have definitely never seen it work. Mm -hmm. Oh, your worth is adventures. That wealth of his was clearly recently acquired. He could certainly afford oh, it. While you're not wrong, we are a bit in the sticks, as it were. And so, oh. if we're going to try to get a little more out of these individuals, perhaps maybe not lambasting them. I just wanted to be honest and say this is my first um. job. <laughs> well, if you think that you're worth more... I'll be happy to pay you some of my cut if you make it your responsibility to see to it that no harm comes to the rest of us. I will protect all of you, but I will not infringe on your pay. I work for my own, but never be afraid to negotiate, especially with pompous asses like that. Right, right. Perhaps the, the question of your negotiating tactic, though, next time we get into a situation. Perhaps maybe letting the bard take the lead. Well, maybe we won't be negotiating with little and experienced babies next time. Yeah, I was going to say, the he butler didn't really was the seem... one that we were. Yeah. yeah. He didn't the seem butler pompous to one. me. He just seemed, it he seemed like exuberant. No. Which means we so definitely I... could have gotten more out of him. But... Well, I, we <laughs> wouldn't have. The butler holds the purse strings there, please. Mm. The butler was in charge of this. Mm. He kept oh. looking at him. And it's fine, but I, lo I like he's Anders. Done... I... He's a nice guy. I'll give he's him that. Fine. He says he didn't poison the apples, or at least he didn't mention that he poisoned the apples. Well, Valentine's not dead yet, so that seems promising. I know the day is still young. I certainly feel poisoned. Uh, speaking of the day being young, shall we you go have a look at the house before it gets dark? Right. Does it make a difference to me? I know, dear. I will tell you all you need to know. That's what makes you grave. Sorry. Equally useful in light and dark. That is technically true. Yeah. So, Mariah, the uh, the house. I imagine you know the you or and Nethers. Uh, well, well we know it's the four layer. miles north on the coast, and north is north. So we'll just head in that direction. See what yeah. happens. Ah, there's a handy dandy map on the screen. Look at that. Okay. Where is, there is. the compass bros? There it is. I'm going to imagine that or no. So, yep, there's a little path that winds its way up. Oh, along okay. the coast. North. All right. Wait, so which house is it from? I don't know why the, they do the dumb compass bros that way. Just, it is. It's a, really uh, annoying. It is up. <laughs> The house is up. Okay. So would that technically have been east then? 
Yeah. So okay. this is so this is the house we're heading to, the one up here to the north. No, 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 no. Uh, it's, no. That's Four miles. North. Yeah. So because that is north. actually yeah. north. It or it is oh, actually okay. up. Um, is oh. where the house is. It is not north. I mean, it's it, up. I, it's not north. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I need to make that compass rose go away, but it's baked into the map. So someone drown the compass. Right. All, right. Yeah. all right. Had too much claw wine. Just give it to me afterwards. I'll get rid of it. And the amount of times that claw wine has gotten us into trouble. I right. don't know what you're talking about. Not the first, not the last. Mm -hmm. You do head up. Um, there is a uh, sort of just a general store. Uh, known as just just calls Winston's store that is um, along the way. And then the last building on the left is a temple to Valkur. Okay. With a cemetery behind it. Prion knows nothing about religion. Well, it's not necessary, though it can oh. be helpful sometimes. Nay, nay, look! Look at the temple! Can we stop by? Is it your deity? Yeah! Oh! Well, by all means. Pray okay. away. She's got the... It's got the... I, uh, I'm personally only really familiar with, um, Umberly and Saloon, but, you know, I know there are lots. Saloon followers are nice, too. Um, Umber... Umberly. Umberly, you, maybe, would, maybe you don't... would know is the yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I would, I would maybe not bring oh, her up. Oh no, I I don't worship Umberly. I, I worship I'm just the saying because I don't really want her on my ass. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, you know, maybe just don't mention Umber at all because if we go into the temple area, they might not like that. They 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 won't like that. That's what I'm saying. Let me be clear. Uh -huh. They really won't like that okay okay i'm gonna wait go outside guys. go ahead i'm going to wait with mariah they don't like me in there yep we'll Aww. just hang out here it's fine go ahead i'll stay outside you know, have some peace time number two i was just gonna go and see if i knew anybody in there i don't need to pray like no I no didn't... no go please go do whatever you need to do <laughs> we'll just hang out shall we not do it on the way back yeah, I was just going to suggest that. Perhaps we maybe dip in on the way back, considering the light is fading and ghosts, nighttime, <sighs> poor choices. And we can celebrate having a drink with our 50 gold. Celebrate having a drink with our 50 gold at the temple? Okay. Oh, the tavern. It's fine. As long and as we go on the way back, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> and that's we, fine. And that's fine. we will. We totally <laughs> will. Right, Bird? Hair flip. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love her hair. <laughs> As you guys continue on then past the Temple of Valkor, mm -hmm. on your right you see a little signpost nailed into the ground. Um, the cliff begins to meet with the waters below. Sort of on the right there were what looked to be run down abandoned shacks down along the water. And they, before they end, the cove kind of meets with the coast and you have just literally a, about a hundred foot drop straight down into the water. And at one point there's a signpost that says simply the jump off. Pleasant. You probably haven't been this far uh, North Mariah. There would be no reason to. Um, nope, definitely not. So, Nether, you would know that you've heard people talk about the jump off. When people talk about um, their uh, a family member uh, being taken by the sea or drowning, it's time to go remember you're alive and go to the jump off. I've probably attempted to do it a couple of times, but oh, okay. as we as we walk out of town, uh, Nether started pretty game, but further away it gets slower. She walks. This is really scary for her i'll match pace with her keep a hand on her shoulder what am i doing here you're yeah i'm gonna admit this is pretty fucking stupid but i'm yeah. not sure we have many good options you're about to get rich you're earning your 50 gold 
the post that's worth it then, but I don't want anyone to be in trouble because of me. I'll just hang in the back. Well, you know where that that's where I'm gonna be, so you know, we'll just stick together. Alright. Sounds good. It's very big out here. Yeah. Sounds are different. Sounds Can you smells. Kind of hear, kind of hear the whistle of the sea a little more clearly. Less of the Lots of people! <laughs> Was you, uh, was you born blind? Mm? What? Was you born blind? No. No, I wasn't. But, um, that's a, that's a long story. I'll save it for another time. I respect that. I'll carry on walking. And what about you, my friend? Uh, uh, are you like our fair-haired friend over there with the sea foam skin? You yourself seem to have a bluish tint to you. I, I'm, I'm a half elf, aquatic. Oh, really? <sighs> my father was aquatic half elf. Your what? Sorry, your father. Yeah. I didn't really inherit that coloring, just a little bit. And I'll hold my hand up, and there's, I've got really long fingers. Actually, like my whole body's like very, very long, and there's just the hint of a little bit of webbing between my fingers. Didn't really pull through. No. So, I have a few things. That's so interesting, though. Oh, I like that. Drow elf. Oh, rude. Well, I'm just going to say, a lot, lot of pointed ears in the group. And he points to his own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, technically, Nether, yes. Nether, Nether sort of takes her hair and puts it in front of her ears. Sure. Very pointed. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with pointed ears. Your ears are fine. Yep. Never be ashamed of who you are. As you guys continue up the coastline, Salt Marsh disappears behind you. It was quiet and a nice little walk as the uh, waves crash against the shore. It's indeed a fine day. And soon enough, on a promontory, you can see a decrepit old house standing in the distance, offering a great view of the uh, sea below. A stiff wind blows off of one of the waves. There's this briny stink of churning seawater all around now. The decrepit house sits on the highest ground in the area. Around it, there's a stone wall crumbled down in many places, exposing the interior grounds. An ornate metal gate lies open at the end of a road, swaying absently in the wind. Wild flora grows through the inner yard, and all but the ears, er, but all the ears, excuse me guys, all the ears cannot hide the evidence of a well-tended garden that once sat here. Near the house, the rotted wooden roof of a water well rises out of the tall grass. Charming. Why have you stopped? We're here. Well, oh. shall we take a look-see? Certainly. Prelm will unstrap his shield from his back and strap it to his arm. Okay. I'll unhook a crossbow from beneath my cape. Hmm. Valentine takes his longbow from off his quiver and steps through and strings it. <clears throat> in case you're wondering, I'll be in the back as well. Hmm. It's going to be quite the party. Maybe it's just me in the front. I'll join you. That's not a problem. Talise yeah. will pull her cloak back and pull out her mace. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like standing in the back. That's boring. Yeah, no, of course not. Hair like that should run through. Exactly. <laughs> hmm. well, uh, oh, all right. Well, Shall we, we approach? Yeah. Might as well. Front door? Back door? If there is a back door. Uh, I wouldn't know. There are uh, three doors that you can see. One of them 
um, you guys can kind of do a little circle around the ground. Yeah, as you're saying, can long come give you an idea. Yeah. Um, the front door, which appears to be the main entrance into the manor, there appears to be a back door through what used to be a small garden area and another side door, which appears to enter the ground, the um, sort of rear wing. The whole manor is laid out in a bit of a T-shape. Um, and <gasps> a map to this um, dun, 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 dun. very large map. Ooh. So if you guys scroll down a bit, you'll be able to. What side of the map the will we of be the on? the house here. It's all black right now for me. Um, I, you should have oh. the whole thing revealed and kind of down. Um, it's all dark. Oh, dark. Yeah, it's all Could dark. Be as you scroll down? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's all dark. All dark. Toot the... Uh -huh. I will fix it. All right. Do it. Toot the ah. ball. Toot the ball. Ah, there it is. Lovely. Well, yeah. There we go. <laughs> all right. So here is the well. Um, the unfortunately, the map I have there's a the uh, um, second floors are kind of encroaching on the front door. So I see. Um, <laughs> right here is where the front door is. Okay. Um, this is the side door with the garden, and um, here is the well and the sort of door to the back wing. Um, DM is so the Anders had mentioned that the house was sort of a little dilapidated and broken down. Can we yes. see if there's a like what side of the house is falling in or um, or is there any sort of indication? Um, so the Thank one you you're for at saying right dilapidated, now. by the way, Ryan. What's dilapidated. That? Thank you for saying dilapidated. <laughs> Not dilapidated. Word, but... Dilapidated. Yes. <laughs> no, uh, my. Um, know, this side of the home here oh, looks to be sagging the most. So, Prion will head up to the front door. If that's where we're going. I'm. Oh, I'm. Mm, yeah. Ooh, Let's no. go for it. What? 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 Just gonna walk in the front door. You know that's where most of the traps are, right? Well, should we? Well, knock? we clearly have someone with us who is experienced for looking for things that shouldn't be found. Do we? Like traps. Yes. Yes, well, I look over at a Nene. <laughs> no. Little Sorry. Nene. Nene? <laughs> she whips her hair back and forth. Ah, I see. <laughs> Me too. Oh. Do you, do you want her to have a look at the door? Well, I certainly shouldn't. I'm just blind. Uh, oh. oh. No, we can't have two blind people in the party. I know, that was in poor taste. I know, except my, my, my point was more as a player that, just like my previous character, my perception say. is shite. <laughs> so, um, I'm not going to take that personal. I was, no. I was Aww. talking to as a, a, a nearest, a nearest? Is yeah. that, I'm assuming yes. that's who you're talking about. Would you like, are yeah. you uh, yeah, skilled I, with searching for traps? I can. And okay. she'll, she'll, I, if the everybody's wanting her to, she'll walk forward and step up to examine the doors. Okay. Mugglers like traps. Go ahead and make an investigation check. The air grows a bit colder as you guys continue to approach. What was once just kind of a funny sight in front of you, as this house looms, <laughs> there's something about it that is really unsettling, the way it's been worn and completely left alone over the years. That is the a nine? very boring nine. With a nine, um, <laughs> it looks like an old door um, almost falling off its hinges, but aside from that, you don't find any traps or anything. If it makes you feel any better, I could try to open it from back here. Or we could peek through the windows. Or, or we could uh, just open it. I'll open one it. One of the other doors. Oh, my friend. <laughs> you just open it. Yeah. You yes. throw open the door, revealing the uh, first Hello. part of the interior. Okay. If if he gets killed, we split his fifty. All right. That seems fair. Fair. This is a Hello. musty, dirty entrance hall. To the left, a corridor leads to the west wing of the home. The walls are bare and bits of smashed furniture lie upon the floor. 
Ahead of you, another corridor leads towards the rear of the house. These are doors. He'll stand there with his shield up and doors. just peer in first and take a look. Okay, make a perception check. What do your half-elf eyes see? 21. Um, it looks... You don't see anything. Immediate threats. This These stairs lead up to a um, another landing and a small little balcony area which encircles the entryway that you have uh, right now. It's sort of a great room here. Now, uh, as your eyes follow the path that one might walk and go around and go up and walk in this little circle balcony that is haloing your party right now, you notice that some of the floor is really sagging in this area right here. Sagging heavily and there seem to be drips of water. Um, uh, clarification, are you, do you mean the... Spot. The floor on this floor? Sorry, the floor of the balcony. Above. The floor of the, okay, the, um, the next story. Makes sense. We need to be careful from above. The floor might collapse. Well, that's unsurprising. I will step in to here. More reason not going the front door. Nether just puts her hand out and grabs your belt, Mariah. Mm -hmm. yep. Just holding on to you that way. She's got her staff in her other hand. All right. Stands up, ready, looking around. Move to there. Look left. Okay, it uh, left. You have dark vision, yeah? I do. Continues down. There are three doors. DM, as they enter the house, can I make a perception check to see if I'm seeing any movement from the two wings, or like from the exterior of the house? I I'm I'm listening for um, if like we've set off a trap or something of the sort. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nope, with an 11, I doubt I hear anything. No, it sounds pretty, yeah. pretty clear on the outside. Um, right. Prion will move here to look right and see that that's got closed doors as well. Mm -hmm. And then walk back to the group. I suggest we try here first and they'll start walking over. This. Sounds fine to me. And they will slowly Nene? step down. Shield up. Okay. And try them forward. And I'll stop to listen at the door. Okay. Um, use the... Uh, generally, um, as you continue to go around, your same perception check from before uh, with the 21. As you look in the initial part and then you listen at this ground floor, you do not hear anything. Okay. I will open the door to myself. All right. It swings open to reveal a library. Ooh. What once was a library. Bookshelves line the walls. Most of them are broken, and in many places they have, in fact, come away from the wall, dumping their contents onto the floor. The few shelves still intact are empty, but a pile of books lies here in the corner. Oh. They're in a bit of a bind. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Look to the floor, sir. Any sort of footprints or anything? Uh, make a survival check for footprints. 13. Um, in here, no, but you do see footprints leading to this door and back up to this um, hallway as well. What, recent or? Um, potentially, probably within, in fact, the past week by that check. Mm. I'll go to walk in and notice them and turn around. So you look to the floor. There's footprints. Hmm. Around a week old. I'll walk in here. And just... Did you say that was a library? Aye. Okay. Oh, how, how wonderful. <laughs> Indulge me. Do the, book, do the I... book, books look wet or anything? Um, some of them look damaged, but others mostly intact. Where are we going? I'm so fast. 
Can I back out. Book? Sorry. I'm check the one on the right. Just gonna. I'm gonna check the pile of books. Um. Okay. Um. I'm make an investigation check. So you open uh, the door here. Ooh, um, we'll get to that 17. Here there is what looks to be like a writing room or some type of study. Against the wall under the windows sits a large wooden writing desk, partially broken and riddled with damp rot. There are three drawers in each side of the desk and a large central drawer. The latter is closed. All the others are open and two seem to have been smashed open. Um, Moriah. Most of these are dull history books, almost like filler books you just put in your study to make it look more impressive. But among them are um, some that might actually be valuable. They are entitled, three of them, uh, they are entitled Magical Properties of Gemstones by Archmage Tensor. Magical Properties of Herbs and Flowers by Archmage Tensor and the metaphysics of mathematics by the mage Nistul. Um, I would love to have those titles typed out if you could send them to me later, and I will collect those and put them in my bag. Okay. Oh. Um, and Where were the footprints? Sorry? As you're looking through, you actually um, look, and there is a damp sort of other piece of paper that is tucked into the book, Metaphysics <laughs> of Math. Okay. You can all, um, it's um, mostly spoiled, but you can make out a couple words at the bottom that says beyond skeletons. Huh. Fold that up and tuck that into my uh, breast pocket. All right. Uh, the, the tracks, did you say they went into the top room or was it the, this one? Uh, this, uh, the one in front of you, okay. to the west. I will walk to there and just gently try the door. Okay. And the door seems to be unlocked. Okay. Open up, should you wish it. Yeah, I raise my shield and open it. Okay. You step inside here. Um, there's a door leading out to a small patio that you saw outside. Other than that, it is only a pile of refuse dumped in the corner here. And as you step in, suddenly this large, booming voice echoes. Welcome, fools. Welcome to your deaths. And it shakes the entirety of of the house. Dust comes from the rafters. The water that had been just sitting in certain pools around this dilapidated house begins to um, run through the creases and drip over all of you, um, creating this sort of brackish scent. I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw. Eh. Mm. Wisdom. I'm going to use my inspiration. My inspiration. <laughs> Seamsies. Huzzah. Huzzah! Worth. I think I'm going to do the same. Oh, double 10. 13. Oh. <laughs> I have a 19. Uh, how do I use my inspiration? I have a 20. 13 for Nether. You already rolled in there, so we have to, you know, with the inspiration rule, um, you have to decide to roll with inspiration. Uh, you, you cannot... See the results and decide you don't like it, and then yeah, I I called it when I did it, it but oh. it got muted, so it, it's fine. Okay, the, if you, I mean, I if I, I trust you, <laughs> I just wanted to be make sure we're I, yeah. with the rule. So if you if you did, then go ahead and roll the second one. I don't trust you, Chelsea. <laughs> oh, rude, rude. Go back to the recording. She's There's a no mimic. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, let's come up. Oh, that's that's not much better. Still well, 13. now that's still 13. Was 13. Wow, apparently 13 was the number to go with, my friends. Yes, Indeed. lots of 13s. <laughs> Ominous. I hope it was enough. But that's pretty good for level one characters, I have yeah, to say. Yeah, it is. It's true. It's you all true. sit and yeah, boom, boom, we're level one. <laughs> your hearts are beating fast, fast, fast at this 
otherworldly voice that has just declared you intruders and dead meat, basically. Is it against but your heart's slow, and you can regain your composure and breath with no ill effects. I'm good. Mm -hmm. What was that? I have that no idea. Fun. Just a bit of excitement. That was freaky. Funny let's yeah. let's freaky. be real here. We're fine. The other is like beside herself, trembling. This is okay. all all she could possibly manage. I I start humming a little bit under my breath a familiar song to keep you help keep you calm. Prion's obviously shield up. Like tried and in, and it's just looking the, around the room. Check for any signs of a uh, of a trap or a, whatever set that off. Uh, sure. Make an investigation check. I'll investigate. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> No There's not a one. Of There's anything. nothing wrong. Yay. Save the garbage it's... pile in the corner. When the rogue comes it's in and does not First crit of the game. Speaking <laughs> of garbage pile, those rolls. <laughs> um, DM, you said that the footprints that uh, Prion found went into this room with the desk. No, the nope, they went into this room. No, into room. this room. I see. Um. Okay. Call out, say, show yourself, and I said, have this done with. Hey, you in. yell loudly, and you hear nothing in response. <laughs> you definitely made that seem like you were going to say something. Um, Suddenly, nothing happens. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a letdown. I wish I could like DM, is this a sense if there are things around me that were dangerous. It is. But like some sort of divine sense? <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. I don't wanna die. I would, like, I would like we to don't have that here. The room to see if there's any sort of uh... Yep, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I'm just looking for like if there's ways in and out or like if there was like a Ugh. If the sound was made magically, or if the sound was made from like someone shouting into like a, a tube somewhere, and like, let's see if this is trash. Oh, it's not. It's fifteen. Fifteen is pretty good. You look around, and you can. There's nothing in the chimney. Um, it really starts to freak you out. There's absolutely nothing that you have seen in here that could possibly be responsible for that sound, and you then step and. Under your foot, you hear a bit of an awkward kind of creak and give to the floor. Step back and look. Underneath your foot, you can see the seams of the uh, the grain of the wood doesn't match. There is indeed a hatch in the floor, like a trap door. I make eyeballs to pre Prion? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> I look down. Oh, I see. And then I see. I'm, and then I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, Valentine backs up from the hatch and sort of draws his bow and well, knocks his arrow, doesn't draw it, but keeps it trained on where the hatch is. And sort of... But before I open it, thank you very much to Pixie Quinn for ten dollars. Let's roll for some inspiration. Yay. Uh, Yay. But before we do that. DM, quick question. Obviously, yeah. I'm not playing a half elf in 5e. Was that effect against Charmed? Nope, it was no. not. Okay, that means I can roll again then. Right, uh, guys, if you haven't got inspiration, please roll a d20. Can and will. Oh. Just use my inspiration. Looks oh. like it's going to be. I've still got oh, mine. No. Never's in the lead with 15. Uh, we've mine, got... Mine's still pending. Apparently. We've got a two Ending. for me, an eight from the DM, a fifteen from Nether, oh. four for Aeneas. So it looks like we're we waiting for we're waiting looks for one more. Lucky day. Yeah. I still have mine. Are oh, you still got thank yours? Thank you, Pixie. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pixie. Much appreciated. Nether, congrats. <laughs> right. So I will, you're in uh, this room 
a ghost that voice has just chastised you, and mm. now a hatch sits before you. Is it? Is that, has it got like a loop sort of pulley, or is it literally you have to use? No, it looks to be pretty disguised into the ground. You'd have to kind of like um, wedge it open a little bit. It's not easy to do. I look uh, to Anira's. I say, uh, maybe your expertise. Check if it's trapped. I can't believe we got a rogue that hasn't got investigation. <laughs> It's like the same, it's the exact same thing we had in the last game. But yeah, you didn't have perception though, did you? Mm. See, Floor investigation. Around. So now you're checking doors for traps, as before, before where you just opened them. Nope, oh. totally safe. Or they ate me. Totally safe. Oh. It's fine. <laughs> just oh, yeah. That's a nat one. It's yeah. perfect. Just, uh, you don't know what they're talking about. They keep talking about stuff, oh. and you're like, guys, they're just regular doors. So I look to her. Oh, uh, so, yeah. so you think uh, it's safe, eh? Oh, I... absolutely. Just open the door. It's a uh, door. I don't, okay. I, I... Can... What? Can I walk? I... You don't trust me? That's a... I don't what? trust this house. It, it never hurts to double check, right? Right? Uh... And... Sure. Talise, do you want me to uh, assist you in that? No, I don't know you well enough yet. Thanks. She's got a point. Yeah. No, actually, she's got a mace. So I... She's got a minus one. <laughs> I know, and I still got an I got an eighteen with a minus one. <laughs> That's dice rolls uh, for you. You go down and look. You you mess around with it a bit. You don't see how this could be trapped. Oh my god. Well, I guess you were right. Oh, so it's, well, it's good to double check. Um, I will try to prise it open. Okay. Do I need a tool for that or? Nope, you can just lift it open. These stairs, there are some actual, a small ladder and then a set of stairs which descend down into what looks like a dark cellar. I drop a grenade down to clear it first. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, wouldn't it? How, deep, how far down is it? Sorry, Dan. If you have something um, that you want to drop down there, I can, you know, make it light up. It looks like it goes we down can... about 20 feet. I'll climb down the ladder then. Okay. Good luck. All right. What is your passive perception? Hey. My passive is 15. 15. Gotcha. Oh, God. Good Lord. Are you telling me there's people down there, Peter? <laughs> I rolled publicly. You look as you creep Whoops. down the stairs and are uh, looking about and something catches your eye and your ear. Just the ever uh, slight um, creaking of a bow and you see looking at you straight in the eye, a slight grin and a sparkle in the eye. No way! Is someone with their bow taut, ready to release the string. No. Nether reaches up and grabs him right. Something bad's about to happen. And yeah, that is where right. we will take our break. Welcome back, mm -hmm. everyone. The party has been commissioned, having just met each other, by uh, Anders Solmore to investigate a haunted house up on the hill to clear it out because it could be a danger to the town. The party has encountered some strange things in the house, but went almost straight to a trap door, which seemed to lead below. Opening it up and stepping down so he could peer down the stairway, Pryon uh, looked into the darkness and looked straight into what seems to be a short dwarf aiming at a crossbow <gasps> straight at his head. Well, you were lucky to see him. Yeah. And from there, friends, we will roll initiative. Excellent. Where so should where, we yeah. our You're so. on the stairs here. Pryon's probably at the top, and then the rest of you are just behind. So I'll yeah. just put myself over here to be on the map. Yeah, That's probably right. good. Like... Um, I will reveal some extra space behind, some dead space here for you guys' as characters to live. It's like, I know I was right behind him yeah. at the top of the stairs. Yeah, we'll say you had to get sort of down closer to the bottom before um, all of this kicked off.
Um, I was gonna say I did click it. Initiate. Oh, mine did not go. Okay, I'll try that again. Do we have any music, DM? Yeah, neither do mine. What are you talking do, about? Do, 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 do. Oh. oh. Oh, don't don't you start singing that in here. That's been going through my head every night. I lay there <laughs> in bed and I'm doing sea shanties. Damn. They, uh, they get in there. Sea shanties. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate life for me. Hiya. Yeah, we haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> Ninja pirate. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was something I wanted to ask. Actually. I'll ask it in Zoom chat. I'll do it in a second once we've done this. Oh, so cool. Secrets. Already, are we all on the board? You all see yourselves in initiative? I think we yes. are. First up, not surprising, the Tabaxi Ranger. Yep. Uh, all right, DM. So uh, I was sort of watching um, him go down, but like. Into what the is dark. your passive? Perception by the 17 way. is my passive perception. Well, I guess that's probably above nine, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a, just a wee scotch above nine. This dwarf just is not thin enough to be hiding behind the chair that he chose to hide behind. <laughs> you can see he him chose above the chair. Head. You can see his forehead on above the chair. You can see either side of his gut on either side of the back of the chair. And he is just kind of aiming through the middle of the uh, back of the chair where there's a space with his crossbow. Brilliant. Can you I shoot? You can't see me. <clears throat> yes. Ah, lovely. That's, that's what I want to hear. All right, then. So, um... Uh, you will need to move forward a bit. You are at the top of the stairs right now. You will have to move through your allies' space and get down a bit closer right. before you okay. can really see him. So that'll so. be 10, and then that puts 15 there? Is that? Yes, 15 okay. there. Lovely. 15 there. No, I... Okay, so uh, I will stand there, and um, so I'm going to use one of the new uh, Tasha abilities. Well, okay, I, I'm going to do that if I actually do the thing I'm supposed to do, which is shoot this bastard. So I'm gonna shoot the dwarf with a- Oh no. Oh no. Uh, the critical fail of a six. So I definitely won't be shooting him with that. So uh, scratch that, cat scratch that. Um, and I'm, oh God. So then I guess I will take the rest of my movement uh, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, and that puts me on his space. So then I'm going to go ahead and use my feline agility. And when I move uh, on my turn in combat, I can double my speed until the end of the turn. Once I use this trait, I can't do it until I move zero speed on one of my turns. So I'm going to move an additional 30 feet because cool. tabaxi. All right. So uh, I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20. 25 to put myself back behind y'all. All right, so and that is going to be my turn. As if the monk movement weren't enough, he's now coming know, in. Right? Yeah, oh, really? Oh, just wait till I dash <laughs> and then I double that. So it's like, Ooh. Yeah, it's like 120 More. that I can move in one turn. I'm ready. Mariah, uh, I was going to say, before Mariah goes, thank you very much to Ugluck again for 300 bits this time, which means everyone gets to roll a d20 for a d6 inspiration. Thank you very much. I'm burning these low rolls, guys. Oh my god, oh. yeah. Oh, well, the funny. Oh, I was gonna say. Oh, there is Talise with a twelve. Oh, we got. Is that it? Oh yeah, Talise with a twelve. So yeah, thank you very much. I good luck. Much appreciated. Good luck. Cool. Carry on. Proceed. Um. All right. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna peer down uh, and uh, take a look at this fellow. Um. DM, would there be an appropriate way to determine whether he is a folk of fortune, so to speak? Um, so not with a free action, a perception oh, check, potentially. <laughs> uh, I'll, um, I'll do that. Um... Perception check. Uh, check. Ah, fuck. Six. 
Well, it's actually kind of dark down there. Yeah. So you're a human. Are you a half elf? So I am a half elf. So you do have the yeah. vision, but yeah. um, it's dim and it's um, it's hard to tell. Uh, it could be any variety of criminal. All right. Um, I'll uh, sort of shout down the stairs. Maybe not straight out murdering to start with. Just a suggestion. Um, oh. And I'll... Um, grab Nether's hand behind my back and say, hey, you got the steer, and give her inspiration. Oh, nice. Uh, I do? I do? Nether, All you're right. up. What? Um, do I have, <laughs> assuming I could see, would I have a target? You would need to move down um, past uh, Talise. All right, I'm going to uh, hold an action um, until I am told to do something by Mariah. Does that something have a? There's nothing specific. I, I don't. I don't want to. I'm not going to move in front of her. <laughs> um, I'm. I'm going to stay behind her. And if there's nothing, I mean, my my two options are to hide up here or go in front of her. And I don't feel either one of them are appropriate. So I'm going gotcha. to. Uh, yeah. But if you, I mean, you could dig dot, holding an action as a half a specific action, specific trigger, trigger is so what I'm saying. I'm going to, I'm going to hold an action to move when I feel Mariah move. Gotcha. Follow her down. Got yeah. Okay, cool. Inaris. Right. So we are, are, we're technically below these stairs. You're above them. You are descending into the cellars here. <laughs> okay, so we need to go... So you don't don't worry. The only person you have to worry about moving around, you guys are all kind of clustered around this thing. So the only person who is difficult terrain to move past at first is Talise. So you just move through her space with the 15 points of movement, and then you can use the rest, which is probably not enough to get you past Prion, but still. Okay. You can then I would... I'd use my movement to go as far as possible. And if I can see a target, I would. Yeah, you can well. see, you can get down to, uh, right to behind uh, Prion and make a shot against the bandit. Um, you can see where Valentine's arrow is sticking directly out of the chair. Um, he had some girth to the left, girth to the right, and some uh, headspace up above. Stuck All in the, the middle the with went, you. But he went right in the middle into its lackluster cover. All right. Gave that to the chef. My next band name. Lackluster cover. <laughs> Good. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> I hate these dice. Without How many passion. ones has it been then? A second natural one on the attack. <sighs> Four. Everyone beat That's the kidding. wisdom saves, but here here we go. Four, Here's friend. the other side of the uh... Waltz. Well, Naturally that does not hit. Naturally. Naturally. <laughs> so you will, uh, anything else for um, Inaris? I think you're out of movement, but you're a rogue. Do you have your cunning action at level one? No. No. I just no. have yeah, sneak attack. Gotcha. <laughs> um, sort of coming up from behind this table is a um, robed man with a um, harsh look on his face who comes forward and um, actually comes all the way up to here and smiles and sticks out his hand. And you recognize his voice from the message that was left for you. Amplified and booming magically, of course, but this is the guy who left the message for you before. Oh. Certainly. And he sticks his hand out. I need everyone here to make in that range. Oh, sorry. I, did I reveal the spell? No. Mm -hmm. There you go. I need everyone ah. here to uh, make a save of the... Oh, wait. No. I just roll. Well, no, we could save. That'd be great. I believe in you. You could save. Gotcha. So between the, the three of you here, 
Um, the flesh it burns. How many hit points do you have in Eris? Uh, this is, uh, ten. The, the question's a ten? ten? You are blinded. <gasps> how many hit points do you have Valentine and Prion? Eleven. And Prion? Uh, Prion has thirteen. All three of you are blinded. Oh no! <laughs> Whatever will you do? <laughs> oh my god! Wow! I'm starting to sense a theme to the party. And he will move back to here. As these um, bright colors leap out from his hands and dance in front of your eyes, burning, burning, and you blink, blink against it, thinking there's something in my eye, but you can't blink away there's the blindness. no save against that whatsoever. There isn't. I forgot there wasn't. I was like, oh, I have to not wow. sleep on color spray. Color spray is amazing. <laughs> it's like sleep at <laughs> yeah. those spells at level one that are just a little mm. good. Uh, so, Prion, you are blind, but it is your turn. Uh, <clears throat> realizing he's blocking the stairs, he will move five feet forward, raise his shield, and take the dodge action. Okay. Um, and just try to obviously focus and I've already taken the dodge action so I can't take the perception action. Yeah. So yeah, that's me done. So this guy says, Yeah, you didn't see me there, did ya? And pops up from behind his chair and uh, shoots his light crossbow at you at a regular attack since... You took the dodge action. Um, it's a five to hit. Missed. Which one stood up? That was this one. Oh, okay. So yeah, the girl one. <laughs> the one then, we all saw. A woman with a longbow reaches up and takes aim towards Inaris. You cannot see her attacking, and so she has advantage. I have a uh, 19 and, ooh, and a 10 to attack you, Inaris. Only the 19. Seven points of piercing damage Ugh. as the arrow makes its way and lands true, striking through your armor into your body. Just a reminder, DM, we have got two healing potions you haven't rolled yet. Okay. And this wig was really expensive, so you killed me. <laughs> I'm going be super pissed. Uh, both normals. Um, feel free to take them, whoever it makes sense to oh, have. Oh, gee, them. I think one of them should be in a narcissist pack. Yeah, I think so. Hmm, I wonder. Yeah, that, that's fine with me. I guess. Um, the two others who were not seen by you reveal themselves and fire. Um, so you're really the only targets they can see. One at Anaris and one at Pryon. Come on, dodgy. Pryon, I have an 18 to hit. Missed. Wow. Really? You have a 19 armor class? Yeah. Wow. How'd you pull? Nicely done. I ain't mad about did you it. Take, did, did you take defense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how you did. Yeah, you did. Nice. Um, cool. All right. Well, then Inaris is going to get attacked with advantage. No. This crossbow will come at you and will... Here's my dice. Critically hit. <gasps> you mean like critically fail hit? It will critically hit. Uh, can hit fuck. Okay. Fuck. Oh. For yeah. 10 points of damage. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm down. I am down. I feel like the other potion should go into Talisa's bag, right? That's, that's already in Talisa's bag, isn't it? Oh, okay. okay. All right. Awesome. Do we get a save at the end of the round, or? Nope. Well, nope. I haven't. I'm, I was like, I haven't gone yet. The, the cleric. Was your not <laughs> your? Was your um? Yeah, it's your turn now. So. Yeah, this was like end of the round is me right 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 no like, I, sorry i meant at the end of our turns that we get a save obviously we don't get a save 
Oh, jeez, I wish. Negative. Um, shoot. My poor baby. Um, For that where are you? In her throat. Uh, where? Oh, why can't I see? Where are you? Why can't I see you? She's ten feet in front of you. Yeah. This was like, come on. Ugh, it's Friday. Um, <laughs> I guess I will go up to her and forget everything that I was going to do, and I will cast Cure Wounds. Oh. That's a good idea. Hell yeah. Roll that healing. Nice. A good heal. Oh, wow, nice. that's an excellent heal. It's a fantastic cure wounds. Well done. Have you only got plus one to wisdom? <laughs> oh, might, I didn't need to, it. might need to check that on before the next game. No stats might need to be changed. Yeah, might, so. Stats might not have been done. Uh, just quickly as well, thank you very much to Pixie, who's just donated $10. Please stop dying. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's another healing potion, DM. So squishy, oh. Pixie. I'm sorry. <laughs> this one goes into the Rangers pack. Okay. Thank you very hey. much, Pixie. Uh, you need to move up to her, five feet of movement, to uh, heal her. She is still prone on the ground. Do you do anything else with the rest of your movement, or you probably don't have a bonus action to use? So. Don't have a bonus action right now. Well, no, I don't. I'm get a little further okay. down the stairs, maybe. Do you want to go further down? I or? guess I could instead of. Well, she's prone. Excuse me. I'll climb over you. Yep. And I'll just come down here. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Or yeah, you can hop yeah. down off the edge, and that's fine, actually. So. It's like I, I didn't measure it. I just leaned. It worked out, actually. Uh, All right. Pixie's just come in again with another five dollars for more inspiration. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you very much, did? Pixie. <laughs> uh, roll a d twenty if you haven't got inspiration, guys. I uh, love it. Oh, 16, Come on. It's going to be Valentine's turn coming up after this. Oh, oh for God's sake! Natural twenty from the nearest. <laughs> First nat twenty of the campaign. Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll take All it. Right. Sorry, I, I did that when I, I mean, when I shot. Oh, her. you! That's right. <laughs> You're not. I'm not counting yours. Count. I'm not counting yours. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well done, Anaris. All right, has everyone been? So Anaris wins it. So thank Anaris. you very much, P Pixie. Thank cool. You. All right, uh, DM. I'm still blind. Yes. You are. All right. So then, uh, I am going to attempt at disadvantage to shoot the bastard who blinded me. So, okay. let's uh, let's let's do that thing. Don't do it. I did it roll. Come on. He's waiting for your attempt. Yeah, right. There it goes. Oh, a 13? You guys will see this guy in leather armor sort of watching and his eyes darting back and forth with a smile on his face. He's holding a staff. And as you see Valentine kind of aiming and then he ducks down right before Valentine fires and it goes over his shoulder. So close, but he's able to dodge out of the way. Damn it. All right. Uh, I am going to stay still. Okay. So, and that's me. Mariah. Um, do I need to move in to see um, farther into the room? You would need to move down, yes. Okay. Um, I will move forward 10 feet, and it's assume that Nether's coming with me then. Um, and that'll be, that'll be my hell action. Nether okay. dashes. Um, and then kind of squatting down low on the stairs um, and looking forward and seeing all of these amassed groups of people. I concentrate on a point in the middle of the room and I start humming notes, which instead of going out, they stay in place and form a chord. And then at this point right over here, something sort of amasses arcane wise in the weave. And I am casting sheep. Okay, what is the radius of that? Um, it's twenty. If I it's a route here, it will hit everyone in the room. 
or uh, not everyone in the room. Um, all it will uh, hit all of these people that we're fighting if it's centered like here, because it's twenty. It's people twenty feet from the point. I think, or I'll get most of them. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you, yeah, you yeah. Can do let's this, okay. Or no, let's do the back. Let's let's do the back line. All right, gotcha. we'll see how high I roll here. Don't suck. Don't suck. Don't suck. Don't suck. That sucked. <laughs> Well, someone's going down, I hope. Starts from the high, right? Uh. Low. Low is first. Low? All right. Mm -hmm. For those of you paying attention at home, that was two more critical fails for our team. Yep. This guy back here falls asleep. Uh, We'll use this for unconscious. Okay. <laughs> It's a sleep mask. Yeah. Boom. All right. Well, that was unfortunate. Um, hey, Nether. Um, I kind of point her arm over in a couple directions. There is uh, someone over there, and there is also someone over there. I don't know if you're feeling so inclined. Nether, you feel so inclined. <laughs> All right. You look at Nether, and um, she doesn't seem to have heard what you've said. All right, that's music that you've sung. Um, she's cocked her head and it's like, oh, that does sound familiar. And you can see her eyes starting to glow beneath her blindfold. Very, very, very uh, uh, white. And she reaches a hand out, sort of follows your instructions. And she says, And a burst of uh, light uh, encompasses the, the mage and the dwarf. So I'm casting fairy fire. Um, it's a 20 foot cube. Cool. I don't think I can get any more than just the two of them. Nope. That should be um, that should be it. If that's how you're, um, if mm -hmm. that is indeed how you are aiming it. 20 foot cube, and I think so that it gets like he's yeah, exactly like that. Boom. Thank you. All right, yes, and indeed, um, I have a 10 on the save from the mage. That is a and fail. And a, roll it, roll it, an eight from the other. They are both, both fairy fired. What does your fairy fire look like? Um, it is uh, sort of a kind of the sort of white that you see when um, a black light shines on it, sort of an ultraviolet kind of um, glow. Is that it for you? Uh, that is it for me. Cool. All right. Daenerys, you are barely conscious and still blind. Well, you're actually a lot more than conscious now, since that was some really good healing that your friend gave yeah. you. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, it's some really good healing. So that was like most of her points. All right, but I am still blinded, correct? Can I, I can try to use my just amazing, astounding sense of hearing and try to shoot him with my longbow, but that's, that's all that, I got. Um, the fairy fire ones, moving. you have advantage on the attacks? But you, you can't see. Uh, okay. So, can't see. So fairy fire would not affect that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I will just try to move and get out of the way as best I can. Hey. Maybe behind here, some sneak attacks. Okay, that later. makes sense. Yep. And yep, I guess I'll just wait out she my kind blindness. Of loudly stumbles over to the wall. All right. His turn. He says, "You should have listened to the warning." looks at you and begins to um, 
uh, move his fingers and little sparks of fire begin to form. And he shoots them in your direction, Valentine. He hurls one at a 11. Miss. Oops, I'm at advantage, but it's still an 11. Second one comes in at 21. Yeah, that'll hit. Third one is a twenty fairy. First hit of the scorching ray does eight points of damage. And the second burst does ten. Oof. Okay. Valentine. And your vision returns to you and then fades. Rude. Alright, yeah, I'm down. Ryan. Uh, has my vision returned, or...? Immediately as your turn comes about, those of you who are blinded are no longer blinded. Um, having no idea about the cat, I will move in to here and attempt to hit. You have advantage I on know. your strike. <laughs> I'm gonna mi oh, I don't know, I did click advantage, but... I will click again. And what weapon are you using? A trident. A trident. 21, so uh, 20 to hit. Absolutely hits. For uh, eight points of damage. Ooh, good. All right, so he stabs. Arrgh! He recoils against the um, piercing trident. Anything else for you? Uh, no, I think that's all I can do. <clears throat> all right. This guy here is going to see you in front of him, Talise, and shoot at you with a crossbow. He hit, he uh, gets a seven. The woman here with the longbow um, looks down the length of the wall, steadies her longbow, and aims at you, Inaris, frustrated that you got up from her previous strike. She also rolls a seven. This guy moves forward. And, um, hmm. He's a little smart, looks up the stairs and sees um, Mariah and is like, that is, and I'm like, the spellcaster! And shoots you with an 18 for four points of piercing damage. Yeah, that Assuming absolutely 18 hits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't have crazy AC anymore. I know. <laughs> I have it now. Shit! <laughs> no. And you that's stole it, it um, from us. Talise, you are up. I am no longer the squishy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking traded rolls, man. <laughs> oh, God. Bad, um, bad squishy. Bad squishy. You got the I weird would... voice again, Sean. <laughs> yeah, that was... Oh. I actually didn't know that was Sean. I was looking at my character sheet. Um, I will cast oh. Sacred Flame at... Um, at the guy right in front of me. How dare okay. he shoot me? Sacred flame! He has a 12 to save. How dare he? That's awful. It was 11 is he a save. is able to duck out of the way. We will fix that next session. You have like 12 wisdom or something. <laughs> have you done that right, um, Teresa? It should be. I know you changed the thingy, but did you know that? Did you change the stats? Yeah, It'd for a more, for a more melee, melee. front okay, line. Yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah. yeah, cool. And, but he is able to dodge out of the way of your spell, unfortunately. Rude. Okay. Feel free to use any movement, and Valentine, please make a death saving throw. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna I'm, move myself closer. Uh, That's what just a con save or a d20? It's just a d20. Just a d20. Can use inspiration right. if you have it. A d20. Uh, Alright, so rolled that one and it is a 13. So that's that a, is a success. That's a check in the win box. Alright. You Yay. take a step back towards life. 
And let's see what is up next. We have Moriah. I always want to say Moria for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my name. Um. <laughs> That's not my name. That's not my name. Okay. Um, I will um shoot my crossbow at this fellow. Go for it. I with advantage. It hits. Oh, well, I did 21, so I'll crit fish. Um, fish. Yeah, no. Uh, so, um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I, whichever one of those damage you want to take. Five I came don't. first, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, so five piercing damage to him. Um, and I'll uh, look down the stairs and say, oh, f- um, and as a bonus action, cast Healing Word on uh, Valentine with a wee bit of musical magic. Cool. Uh, so. Musical magic. Uh, have six points of healing. Yay. Nice. Um, and I'll whisper down to Nether. Uh, same guy's still up. I see him. Weird. <laughs> I'm going to shoot the um, mage with an Eldritch Blast. Oh, straight. And I have a normal roll on this because of uh, fairy fire, right? Well, but before you the... roll, before you roll, Sean, before you roll, Pixie Queen has just donated another five dollars, so we all get to roll for inspiration. <laughs> if you haven't got it, <laughs> look, I'm still sitting with mine. From the first round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still have it. Um, oh, um, you, it spe- way, fairy fire specifies you have to be able to see the target to grant the game. Oh, advantage. rats! Well, we'll see what this does then. I will use my inspiration. How's that? In order to roll advantage. So that makes it a normal roll. Zap. AC 22 with eight points of force damage. Ooh, yes. As this bolt of energy erupts from her hand and blasts this guy in the shoulder and he recoils and almost uh, hits his head back against the wall. (laughs) And he looks to be barely hanging on to consciousness. Yeah, girl. Let's get this. He did. Yeah, you did. (laughs) Let's get this done. Sean, roll for inspiration as you've just spent it. Oh, yeah. And wins it back again. Oh, wow. Uh, on top of that, a massive thank you to Pike, who's just donated ten dollars for another healing potion. And on top of that, Knoxville Buckeye for another thousand bits for another potion. DM. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Knoxville thank you Buckeye. very much, guys. Much appreciated. <laughs> seemed rather. Gee. I know who that guy is. Oh, you know. I think I might know who a Knoxville Buckeye is. <laughs> so that's two more healing potions, DM. If you want to do that. Uh, right. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> JZB says, can I donate to remove potions? <laughs> no! Oops. No. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> who, who said Wait, that? <laughs> JZB. No one. No one. Uh, I like that. I, I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm kind of, I might be a fan, actually. <laughs> Inaris, it's your turn. Who, who has the potions? Um, you... <laughs> You guys each have at least one, so we're going to okay. put these in your okay. pockets after the battle. So. Okay. Okay. And right. to add a lot more enemies. All right, Inaris, you're up. Aww. Perfect. All right, just to verify, I can see now. Correct. Awesome. So, what bad guy just looks like the biggest Kill the asshole? caster! Let's kill the caster. He looks like the biggest asshole. And I'm going to attack with my short bow. I don't want to die. You have advantage. I do have advantage. Yeah, he's fairy fired. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, do that again, and I'm going to use my inspiration. You've used, you've just uh, shot. You just get one more roll, yeah. You've, so a you've shot twice already. Will hit. Twelve will hit. It will. 
So while Chelsea's doing that, JZB has just donated a thousand bits and says, subtract one potion, please. Kill them, DM. <laughs> That's not how this works. Dude, That's not how this works. We oh, get we get a healing level potion. Level one TPK. <laughs> we'll figure we'll fight. figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, thank but you very in much, the meantime, Daisy. Time, Inaris, you set your deadly purple-eyed aim on this Red. guy, and your arrow is true, so true that you remove every ounce of life from him. How does your arrow strike him? Strikes him right in the eye and just knocks him back and just blows out the back of his head. Indeed, there is a splatter of um, of brain matter that splashes upon the wall in front of you, Prion, and he crumples dead in front of you. A splatter of matter. Anything else <laughs> for you, uh, Inaris? She's just going to laugh and say, that's what you get. All right, Prion. You didn't give us a chance. Oh, no, it's wrong word. Well, he's going to run and jump over this thing and land here. And stab at the dwarf. Is he dwarf? For 24 to hit. Oh, yeah, definitely. For only four damage with double ones. <laughs> <laughs> and that's me dumb. Gotcha. And you're using it one-handed with the shield, yeah? Cool. Um, it is their turn now. Ah! Uh, hey! Hey, they... They killed Sandballot! And they all kind of, uh, give a little bit of a cry, and these two rush towards you, um, Pryon. Um, they drop their, uh, crossbows and pull out scimitars. Uh, the first one, one of them hits for seven. The second one hits for a 19. Yep, 19 hits. Five points of slashing damage as he manages to find a chink in that armor. Okay. Uh, this scout looks towards you, Inaris, and says, I'll, I'll have you for that, and makes two longbow attacks at a six and a 16 to hit. Yeah, hello. Yeah. You're muted. Uh, of course I am. One one hits. Okay, uh, that one does seven points of piercing damage. There's a very large bow, and um, you can feel there's an extraordinary power behind the arrows that are um, piercing through your armor. And this guy snores. You can hear them beginning to shout, "Hey, hey, help! Help! They got him! They got him!" Stuff like that. All right. Uh -oh. Ooh. Ooh. Um. Hmm. I guess that's not oh, what no. I want to do either. Oh, no. I guess I will cast Sacred Flame again. Alrighty. Against the same one. Yeah, he's making me really, really mad that he's not going. Is he now? Yeah. Hashtag super rude. Um, I've got exactly a 10 on the dexterity saving. Ha ha! Suck it. You call upon Volker and, ooh, with seven points of radiant damage, um, your deity, you see this sort of light. Well, actually, what does the radiant light of Volker look like to you? Um, very brilliant, like, very brilliant, vibrant yellow. Um, does it make sense to say like electric flame? <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. You stick your um, what do you, what is your holy symbol or what do you have a shield with a holy symbol oh, no, on it? Oh, no. no, I have a pendant um, that is a, it is two lightning bolts behind uh, on top of a like. I'm drawing these things. Can't you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's two I, lightning I know what you mean. It's the symbol with of Volker. like a crest. Right, but instead of the cloud, it's like a cresting wave behind it. Oh, cool. Because it's over umber. 
Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you hold up that that symbol, and this sort of light goes around, almost like a lighthouse spinning for a moment, <laughs> casting its rays across the room, and then stops right on him and this eruption of yellow electric energy shoots through him and almost burns straight through him you see his chest um, boiling in the um in the radiant energy and he falls dead yes. um Thank as, you, as it's the start Vengeance. of a new round i guess this get this out of the way <laughs> people are going crazy tonight what um, guys guys okay. Worth it. Worth Massive it. thank you to Pixie Quinn who's just donated $15. It says, screw Jay ZB, have a potion and an inspiration. So if you haven't got inspiration, please roll. D20. Oh boy. Oh, oh my people, god. Oh my god. Wow. It's a the three, three of us. <laughs> the three of us that need it have all rolled sevens. So roll That's again, invisible. guys. Seven eleven. No! Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is bizarre. And no, then you two of us roll 11s. 11, 11. Oh, can you beat 7, that? 11. Yes, I can. Oh my god. Wow. Brian gets inspiration. What a D20 duel. Uh, Brian yeah. gets inspiration. Thank you, Pixie. You guys are Thank crazy. you very much, Pixie. Yep. And well, you guys just don't want this game to end, so you're like, <laughs> just keep rolling for shit. Pixie, yeah. this, this is my dominion. There's, there's more for that. Ugluck is just coming with can, another 300 bits. My... Oh, well, can I let's change my deity and have it be Pixie instead of Valkyrie? <laughs> well, we right. can consider it almost. So but, um, let's let's get through another round and then we'll talk about the D6. Um, okay. It is right now uh, uh, Valentine's turn. Yeah, so having been singed and also killed and then brought back to life, uh, Valentine comes bolting out of this alleyway like a cat out of hell. Um, and a cat out of hell! Yeah, so she's gonna go 510. Uh, You're welcome! 15, 20. Mm -hmm. Thank you! Uh, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 gets me in range with the archer. And he's gonna use his two uh, short swords. So, first one is a 12. Oh. And she will duck out of the way. All right, and then he's gonna use his bonus action to do the offhand attack with his other one. Did you use a bonus action to dash? I didn't. Okay. Uh, so the uh, my limited speed line agility is when you move your turn in combat, you can double your speed until uh, the end of the turn. Once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you move zero feet. Thankfully, me being dead for a turn. You did move did. zero feet, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. So uh, I, I have just burned that move again. Thank you, Tabaxi. It's the Tabaxi Taxi. That's cool. So, uh, <laughs> I like uh, it. So, just don't uh, ever say it again. <laughs> 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 All right then. <Yes>. So, <laughs> using uh, my bonus attack, uh, I'll use or my bonus action. I'll go ahead and do my uh, offhand short sword attack. Fifteen to hit. Fifteen hits. Lovely, and that damage will just be. Uh, so it's just the D six, which unfortunately was just a one. So uh, that'll be a one then. But you bloodied her. You did. She is not at full health anymore. True. And also, she can be shooting at disadvantage if she tries to take a pot shot at my friend. Indeed. So. Mariah. Alrighty. Um, I will. Uh, let's see. I will shoot at this fellow. Uh, with my crossbow. Um. For a 16. No, that yes. was a. Well, that was a dagger that I somehow tried to, uh, do but that's it's the same attack same uh modifier. so just roll whatever attack and then roll the damage uh, just picture okay. like yeah. holding up a dagger like shooting <laughs> and then it five. works like oh um it was uh five oh, damage no. oh, no. um nice. and then i'll um i sort of yell out to the group um don't don't hit the one in the back until the rest of them are dead just fyi he's uh he's out cold and um Oh, yeah, I'll stay where I am. Cool. Nether. Oh, and say, uh, hey, um, I'll, I'll point Nether towards some more targets, basically. Um, so, uh, Nether's uh, got a huge grin on her face. Says, I feel your magic. And she shoots out another uh, Eldritch Blast at the one that um, Mariah just shot. I'm going to use inspiration on this. 
for the straight roll. For the straight roll. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah! I have rolled a natural 20. Amazing. The blind teasing. I'm so proud of you! This... I have done a total of 10 points of force damage. Yes, and this dwarf cannot take that damage. Um, care to describe how uh, Nether's fatal blast looks like? Um, so it it streaks past Prion and hits him, the enemy in the chest, but it seems to pass through him. But as it does, all of the life drains from the, uh, the creature's face um, and his eyes sink in and he opens his mouth as if gasping for air and he sort of clutches his throat as if drowning and then falls forward dead. Oh, that's awful. Cool. <laughs> Awfully awesome. <laughs> Very cool. That's my girl. Um, I accidentally skipped over. Miss Inaris, your turn. Awesome. All right, so I'm not going to get the one that's prone, so I'm going to get the one in front of Valent. Well, wait, yes, I can. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. No, yeah. I'm going to move over so I don't accidentally shoot Valentine. And take aim and pray that I actually hit. That's a 10. 10 is not going to do it, unfortunately. It's a bit too far, a bit too obstructed. Okay, that's, that's all I got. No, I had to. Yeah, that's all I got. Brian. Uh, Brian's like looking around, obviously trying to get his first kill in his life. Um, <laughs> sees the cat and charges in as well. Sees the other people vaporize. I want to do that! Right. <laughs> Michael! Like go. Oh, they'll probably miss now. <laughs> 14 to hit. It hits! Skewers him for a massive 6 points of damage. 6 points of damage. It's not bad. And she is cornered. Just out of curiosity, why is that rolling both a D8 and a D6? One is two handed. One is two handed, yeah. But he's taking the one handed damage. Got it. It's a yeah. versatile weapon. And as a bonus action. No. Uh, shall I? Nah, nah. Uh, yeah, that's a bonus action. I'll do. Um, what is it? Second wind. Oh, cool. Oh, sh no. <laughs> um, and because I clicked on it, it won't bloody do it now. Oh, there we go. D10 plus one. So nine, nine. points back. So boom. It's pretty good. That's solid. She will drop her um, bow and look between the two of you, and eyes will settle on you, um, uh, 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 Valentine, and she will make a first short sword attack against you at a 21. Meow. Dealing six points of piercing. And I'm down. Meow. All right, and she will smile and then turn upon you, Prion. But attack, and it will only... Level one. Level one. Oh, <laughs> I didn't hear that DM you cut out there. You don't need to hear it. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nine to hit. Does not hit. It glances off your armor, and then her eyes widen in fear. She will uh, run over the body. One, two, oh. will provoke. Oh, will it now? She does indeed. Oops, I moved the tabaxi. Uh, 18 to hit. That hits. For six points of damage again. Oh, she seems so heavily bloodied. She's just... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Running desperately in this direction, which brings us to Talise. Yeah. I will fire my crossbow at her. All right. Watch out, watch out. You can't escape us. Roll the attack, you'd roll just damage. There. Yeah, I was like, that's not what I was trying to do. Roll, I say. Nice. Nice. A moving target, quick left to right. You lead your shot, and the quarrel strikes through her chest, leaving her dead. 
I go, no! Well, she was running. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you want that? Aww. I think that's what that's, those are that's called. That's our contract. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's, I'm just going to... Did we win? No. Um, well, we need to get the cat back up, and um, then we can kill the one the that's very next day? over there. <laughs> We've still got one um, more. But yeah, before we do anything, more. let's get these ones done quickly. So thank you very much to Ugluck for 300 bits. Oh so my God. if you haven't got a D6 inspiration, roll for it now. Oh, me. Everyone, if you haven't got it. Brian's looking good. Oh, that was nearly a Talese with uh, 20 there. So anyone else? I okay, so Brian. you got a Brian. So Brian wins that. So thank you very much. And on top of that... Manx is coming with $50 donation. It says, use what? it or bank it, you sea dogs. Wow. $50. <clears throat> so wow. that's five lots. Oh, that's, we have that? the best What's, viewers. Y'all are amazing. amazing. We'll sort that out at the end, amazing. Manx. But thank you yeah. very, very we'll much. Wow. Guys. Much yeah. appreciated. Oh, my God. You thank guys you so are much. Incredible. We who are about to die salute you. <laughs> You're already yeah. dead. It's fine. Speaking of which... Yes. So let's get the cat and kill the dwarf. I'm going to start leading Nether down the stairs. <laughs> well, maybe the dwarf might have something interesting to say about what That's else true. they might find in here. Yeah, let's truss him up. Um, it sounded like they was uh, trying to warn someone. Yeah, we might have company here in a bit. Um, and where was she going? A point to the one. Good question. She seemed like she was going past the stairs. The so stairs I wonder if there's some sort of alternative exit <laughs> um but uh, I, I, I is someone uh, gonna take care of uh, I smell a lot of blood oh, well, fine um, fine fine no we um, don't have a healer <sighs> fine. does does Prion have his net like on him yeah you good with knots hi that I am how about you tie that fellow up? Make sure he doesn't run off on us or do anything. I net him up. This is my last healing spell. So I blew all mine I, too. Uh, I believe he needs level it. Level one. Why don't we use a healing level potion? One? Don't we have five hundred? Minimum. Actually, I have no idea how many we have and who we've, has them. We've probably got about I, five sitting I there, will, not I in will, anyone. What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely have at least one. That I, I know of from the very first. Potion, but... <laughs> oh, burb. Yeah, we've all, all right. got one healing potion. <laughs> I will uncork okay. a healing potion and just rain it down on him. No. <laughs> I'll just pop it in his mouth. There you go. Good job. What's uh, up, buddy? So that's two lives gone. Well, two lives saved. Two You're welcome. Plus, plus two? Is normal or is it 2d4? Yeah, 2d4 plus 2? I can't remember. 2d4 plus 2. Yeah. Nine. Um, nice. Nine. Nines. Hmm. Um, actually, I'll, I'm going to, as a precaution, I'm going to close the um, the thing at the top of the stairs. The, um, the okay. trap door. All right, you close it. Um... <sighs> Well, now, y'all. I'm going to disarm this dwarf. Right. Uh -huh. And then disarm. I'm going to net him up. As you move over to that location, you hear this sort of... <laughs> the sound of creaking bones and scratching fingers on the door. Which Behind door? You. This one. That's not disturbing at all. Huh. Just kind of scritch, scritch, scritch. Slowly. Does it look like the door's been open in a while? Um, this one, in fact, looks like it is locked shut. Maybe that's for a reason. How about this one? Um, this one also has is fitted with a lock. All right. How about we uh, wake him up? See what he has to say. Apologies. What did I miss? Oh, uh, lots of close calls. Um, in fact, I should probably down a healing potion while we're here. I'll prod the dwarf. You're wounded. 
Yeah, uh, someone shot me. That was rather unpleasant. Was it one of the ones I killed? Um, you know, in the darkness, I kind of lost track of who hit whom, but it very well might have been. Well, you're welcome anyway. You know, I appreciate it. Did they have anything? Um, we definitely should search their bodies. I'm definitely interested in the spellcaster and what he might have on him. Um, but let's talk to this fellow. See what he has to say. Give him a kick. Yep. Dope. Hey, wake up. (laughs) Oh, shit. Aye, it's a lucky day. You're still alive. Oh, shit. Bugger me. (laughs) No, nope. yeah. won't be doing You're that. in a right bit of trouble now. Uh, Thanks, no. Um, <laughs> I, I look. When I was a kid, I was. Um, I they made me be bad. Uh huh. Haven't heard that one like a million times. How many more of you down here? Um, Speak truthful now. Will, will you let me go? I don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe. What's what? I mean, what's your price? It's gotta be a price, right? Oh. You gotta tell us who all is in here. What troubles you found in here? What you hiding in here? What you doing in here? All of the above. And what's behind that okay. door? Okay. Well, we're moving goods in and out, right? That's mm-hmm. what we do. I don't know how they do. I, I my job is mostly staying here, so um, but we managed to trap all the undead nasty over in that door there, um, and the rest will be rest. Um, yeah, that's just me. Wrong answer. Just me. Uh, Definitely I, uh, sounded like you were calling for help. Can I shoot him? Oh, not yet, no, not no, yet. let me hit him. Uh, no, 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 no. I haven't killed anyone yet. Let me do it. <laughs> that's just oh, the, that's an intimidation man. check, if anything. Yeah, go ahead and make it. And he's he's not very intimidating. He's more he's he's too friendly to be intimidating. Um, oh, natural yeah, twenty provide... for oh, a nineteen. <laughs> hey. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't kill me. There's others through the passage in the corner with with the boat. Oh, there's a boat, is there? How many? That's think... this boss's quarters right there. How Who many? do you work for? Me, I work for... I work for Sand Ballot. Sand the, one you, the one you shot. Who did he work for? We shot a couple. Well, that's a good question. They call them Snake Eyes. Ooh, snake eyes. Is snake he a human? Snake. Is he a uh, half elf? Is he? No, is he a demon he's, like he's me? A he's a man, sneaky, <laughs> sneaky old bastard. Yeah, clever, dangerous. That voice sounds familiar. Are you from town? No. Uh, uh. <laughs> sure? Never spent any time at the net? Well, maybe I've been there before, but um, I'm not from here. Mm. Um, DM, uh, question. Which was the one that you said was the boss's quarters? Right here, up north. Up, up north. Actual north. Oh, here. Um... The one this that's door. kitty corner north of him? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm having server connection trouble, so I'm, I'm not sure. <sighs> Me I'm too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Roll 20 is playing. Yeah, roll 20. Okay. Are you sure you're going to let me go? We don't know yet. <laughs> How many no. undead are in there? You see skeletons, oh. zombies, what is... What are we talking? Maybe half a dozen. Well. And then there's something else further in. Like what? That's what they said. Said not to go. Mm-hmm. The issue is we have to, so maybe you can come with us. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, I'll help you out. Yeah. Yeah, you will. Hi. 
We could just throw them in. I think in Yeah, this that'd be helping us out. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you don't want to do that. Why not? Fuck. Might be humorous. I know. I do love to be entertained. Well, now, there's no point in being cruel. If we find out what he, kn what he knows, then we should either dispose of him or let him go. Hmm. None of this drawing it out might seem like fun. Hey, I've it been is. helpful. I mean, you, you have. Ah, oh, you have. Look. Just let me go untie me right now. The others will probably be coming as we were shouting and stuff, so. What other part of the building are they in, these others? There's a door in the corner there, like I told they're, you. They're, they're past that, then. Yeah. Garden the boat. How many? Oh. Uh, I guess. Oh, God. He kind of looks around at his fallen companions, and you can see him realizing the mortality of the situation. I guess maybe three or four left. Any of them do any more of those magic that I heard? Oh, no, no, no. That's just Sand Ballad. He's just the, the mercenaries that are left. Those goblinoid bastards. Smelly folk. Hate them. Oh, that's What's incredibly helpful. It is. What's your name? Yeah. <laughs> so, if all your friends were down that hallway, why was your scout friend running that way? Uh, probably to run and get help. That's sorry. So, in case I was unclear, he's pointing. There are door. This yeah, corner. there's a past secret passage. Thank you. Here. Okay. Okay. I thought I thought we were talking about the the quarters to the north here. Got right. it. Brilliant. Okay. And now we're on the same page. Now we're all on the same page. Um, what's his name? Alvor or Almor. Almor. Hmm. All right. We have to take him in. Oh, I'll I'll be hanged. Don't oh. have to. It's all right. There are plenty of people who seek their fortune that don't need to be shamed for it. Yeah. You're not helping. Just don't. Quiet. Not you, him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we're being kind to you by not killing you. Right. Because you shot at us. Unwarranted. Mm. Mm. Wasn't very nice. Mm. So best be on your way. Know that we're putting ourselves out there by letting you go. So, do us a fair one in return. Don't screw us. He nods. Aye, if we see your face again, why well, that the girl on you? The what? The girl. Look what she... she she puts up her, like her, her uh, blindfold and puts it in. She's like, I can see you when you're all alone. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I, look what she did to your mage friend. Uh, Sam Bell, please. I'll, I'll take, loose. The, take the net off him. <laughs> okay. Go on, be gone. Just Makes a bolt up the stairs. <laughs> I'll be watching you, Almor. I'll look to Nether. I'll, you know? to and I'll just smile. That was pretty funny. Um, I would like Nether, to search the mage's body. I would like to search the scout's body. I would like to hug Nether and tell her that she is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you do find a key to his room, the room, which What's you can only on? assume is a key. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I find so amazing. You said DM? Yes, to okay. Sam Ballard's room. His okay. staff is just a mundane arcane focus. Not <sighs> hip, yeah. Boring. All right. Um, I'll, uh... Actually, could be oh, handy. Want... Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll bring the staff over to another. I say, uh, what did the uh, one I, disp uh, the one we let go have on him? Because I emptied all of his pockets and stuff. Uh, he, uh, not, like, um, well, probably he's been a couple silver and copper, like, uh, five silver or two copper, and then, um, just, that's about it. Pocket lint. 
<coughs> this one had some change. Do we have anyone looking after party loot? Um, Ooh. sure. Not me. <laughs> I was a loot, a loot <laughs> pile for us, but we actually might have call to spend it in this game. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. So, um, how much, um, five copper silver, and five copper? Five silver, five copper. All right. Two copper. Oh, five silver, two copper. Okay. Fifty platinum. Huh. <laughs> 700 gold. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll take the key over and... Um... It's more than two gallons of ale. What was on the... Uh... <laughs> DM, what was on the scout? Anything? Uh, let's roll here for me. Uh, uh, six silver pieces. Hmm. Like Valentine pockets that. And a longbow and arrows for those of you who need to ref... Uh, replenish and he'll take the arrows mm. so he'll uh he'll look over at uh Daenerys. do you need some yes i could thank you uh, where, are you, where are you guys about in the room too uh, um exactly where i'm at i'm at the corpse of the scout so about i am behind mariah okay. oh i guess then i am Right next to her because Calling I was the wind. <laughs> Thanks. I'm so glad someone finally said it. Um, yeah, because I just I got excited and hugged Nether. Okay. As you guys um uh do are kind of looking around, rooting around and finding these things, you hear a loud banging sound as the door over here shoots open. You see a tall, heavily armored, goblinoid figure um, run into the room. Behind, with uh, longbows drawn, are two others, and uh, you hear them shout, "There's the murder!" You see, or you you hear the women shout, "There's the murderers!" And you hear this guy just shout, um, "Hey, does anyone speak goblin?" No. Nope. nope. Well, the other I one that uh, who does not um, identify the murderer says something in a guttural sort of um, strange language that none of you recognize, and probably goblin. Probably they goblin. attempt to ambush you. Probably goblin. <laughs> right back into oh, it, folks. Boy. No. Fucking great. All right. <sighs> Go initiative. Well, I'm gonna roll the dice. Oh, I could click <laughs> on myself. All that right. would be good. Oh, that was a 15. Sean, have you used your bardic inspiration yet? No, I haven't. I was going to use it when I okay. missed. Okay. Oh, I got a D6. Just, just want to make sure that you still had a. Was it me that got a D6? It was, wasn't it? I'm gonna use it now. Yes. Massive seven initiative. Oh, I was gonna say. Who gets stuff? Me? Do I get stuff? Well, uh, yeah, we had a, uh, because we have to roll all these d20s all the time, we had the idea that maybe we should make a macro for it. <laughs> Can't believe we That's didn't really think funny. about this months ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. So apparently That's this brilliant. is one that will work. Oh. So what's this do? So if we get inspiration, we Peter just That click. rolls for all of you. Nice. Oh, I got a thing? Or that's Amazing. just a sample? That's just a sample. Okay. That's cool. Thank you to a very special member of this crew, much beloved to all of us, yes. alias Prime. If you enjoy our Don't have video, any idea what we would do without you. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Awesome. Struggle, fail, all of our all of our deaths. Here. Oh yeah, and so much in between. Um, all right, Inaris, you're the first to be able to act as these creatures crash through the door. Um, I am going to be really, really smart and yank my healing potion out of my pocket and drink it because I have two hit points. Oh, yeah. No, do that. All right. That is your action. Yes. All right. So what is that? 2d4? Indeed. Mr. Valentine. Valentine is... You can finish your movement uh, between if you would like. Um, there. 
Daenerys. Just so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Valentine's gonna move to here and take a shot at this. Uh, this, I guess, human. Yeah, yep. person. Yeah. Uh, so, and then hopefully, I'll be able to do something that isn't sad. All right, and shot is a. Ooh. To hit. 20's not sad at all. Yeah, that'll do something. And so with that, they will take eight piercing damage. And right. then I'm going to go ahead and use my um, favored uh, favored foe from Tasha's, which is when I hit a creature with an attack roll, I can call on my mystical bond to mark the creature. Mm -hmm. uh, so I get to roll an extra D4 uh, damage to them the first time I hit them on a turn. How'd you do it? Cool. Is it like spraying? It's, uh, uh, it's actually more of like a yowl. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good old time. All right. Roll the extra. Roll extra D4. Nice. So uh, that is uh, three more. So. Cool. 11 points of damage to that. You look surprised by that. All right. So 5, 10, 15, 20 puts me there. And then I'm going to take 25 and 30 to put myself behind the staircase. So, Or at least in theory. Right. Moira. Maria, Ma God damn it! I'll get you it. You know my name. Yeah, yeah, Maria. Just say her That's name. All right. Just say her name. Um. All right. I'm going to Maria. <laughs> I'm going to circle around another to here, and then going to look across the uh, the long table towards this. Um, creature and say um you know you're really rather derivative and cast vicious mockery <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hurt my mind. feelings <laughs> <laughs> make a wisdom save and a 12 on the wisdom save <laughs> hey! so he takes uh, four, four points of psychic damage and uh, is disadvantaged on his next attack roll and then I'm going to <laughs> then I'm going to duck <laughs> for a little bit of cover. Gotcha. Actually, yeah, I'll do that. Here. <laughs> All right, Talise. I'm going to move myself forward. One, two, three. Uh, that should be enough. And then I shall cast myself another sacred flame on, on the goblin man goblin man has goblin 12 to save unfortunately i hate him i know <laughs> the lighthouse does not strike anything else no nether nether uh steps where she can tell that there's nobody standing um and sort of takes her uh, net off of her shoulders and rips it into the air and throws it up and as it comes down it turns into a giant pile of nets as she casts Minor Illusion and hides inside a large pile of nets. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, he kind of looks confused and wants blood, does this guy who runs around and is going to... Uh, Cleave at you with a long sword with disadvantage. Is he good? No, just the one attack. Um, that's going to be an eight to hit, which I know will not hit. This one is going to try and duck and hide behind the stairs, but has an opportunity here. She's damaged. Oh, wow. Her two longbow attacks go out. One is at a four and one is at a 20. Five points of piercing damage for Valentine. Ah. This one moves forward, steadies aim, and takes aim at Talise. Fires twice from her longbow. I have a 13 and then a natural 20. 13 doesn't. Uh, <laughs> takes six points of damage from the natural 20. Okay. And, uh, whoops. That's all right. Prion, you're up. Oh, Prion will do. Um, Prion. He will Excuse move me. 5, 10, 15, 
20, 25, 30. Pull out a javelin and just launch it at the back of the hobgoblin. Okay. Nice. Attempt to natural 20. Wow. Wow. Yes. For 15 points of damage. It yes. impales him and you see this little blood splatter go across Valentine as it falls to the ground. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I finally and then we'll literally just shield up trident at the ready I Ooh. think he likes it mm. yeah. Daenerys you're up I keep forgetting to unmute myself I am going to attack with my long bow or my short bow please hit this time 17 to hit. Mm -hmm. I will hit. This buddy over here in the corner. Um, this one is hidden behind the stairs from your view. Okay, yeah, you this one over here. Okay, this one, gotcha. Yeah. Yep, go ahead and roll damage. Sorry, my internet's lagging just a little bit. So you good, little, you good. A little slow. Destroy. 11 points of damage. So there's no sneak attack. Um, you do not have an ally or advantage, so still does eight though. And anything else from Inez? Feel free to move yes. and complete your movement, or we will head to Valentine. I'm good. All right, Valentine's going to go ahead and uh, draw his short swords and move in five, ten, fifteen, twenty to get into melee range. Melerange. Melerange. Uh, and attacks with short sword. First swing of a 13 is not going to hit. 13 is the armor class. Oh, yay! Okay, cool. So uh, that does five piercing damage. And exactly what you needed. Uh, oh, I was going to say. You oh. find that the blade pierces just enough and then you give it a little extra thrust and you see a little bit of blood just kind of oh, erupt from her lips as she slumps into the corner. Excellent. Uh, and then, so that was 5 from 15, 20. And then, uh, so I, can I go under the stairs or no? Well, no. Okay. Yeah, so, you can pass here. But, but you could pass past her anyway. Bonus action so. pack. I can only use it against the target that I hit the first time, or can I still use my offhand attack? You can use your offhand attack against a different target. Lovely. So uh, you can go under the steps, you said? Yeah. All right, so. If you have uh, that movement, which right. you probably do freaking that. Yep. 25, 30, boom, 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 gets me into range of that one. Go for it. And the offhand. Some things never change. Some just things never ever. change. Six seconds is a long, long time. It's very mm -hmm. true. All right, so second swing. Oh my god! Is wow. it crit? Awesome. So uh, that will be four plus. So that's six mm -hmm. damage from that, and then I'm going to use my ability one more time to mark the target. I can do it up to my proficiency bonus. So okay. Uh, so it'll add, it's only uh, three default. points of damage, right? Yeah. Or four points of damage first because it uh, was your offhand attack. Oh, oh, you are correct. 100%. So, yes. So it was just the. Yeah. So, four so close to death in front of you. Ah, oh, so close. Mariah. Oh, gosh, my turn already. Um, yeah. I'll uh, pop up from behind the table and I will uh, try shooting at it with my crossbow. Oh, Give for a 19. Try. I think hit. that hits for five piercing damage. And that kill is yours. That was anticlimactic. Ah. <laughs> the hobgoblin was so confident. He was. And he took a javelin to the knee. He did. That was a. <laughs> you guys both. You had multiple crits in that one to help yeah. you. Yeah. Oh. Um, Made up for all the exciting. earlier stuff. Very yeah, nicely they're... done. Puts her shawl back on her shoulders and stands up. Neat trick. I told, told you that we should have a talk. Yeah. Thinking that. Well, in any event, um, I really think we should check out this boss guy's room. I agree. Pulls his javelin out of the back of the yeah. uh, hobgoblin. Should we search <laughs> these first? Yeah. 
Might as well see if they have anything useful on them. Um, DM, what's the rule for collecting bolts? Uh, I've never wielded a crossbow before. Half of them that you fired will be usable. Okay. Also, there's about... I mean, f- four of these people down here had crossbows. So. Right. Oh, lovely. I'm just taking all of their crossbow bolts. <laughs> yeah. You got a bunch. Yay. I'll divide any arrows to campaign. find off the two scouts between me and uh, Anaris. So you notice, yeah, there is this long, this very uh, rough barracks here. You can see there's a large cooking pot, which is kind of a meager stew that is being cooked. Um, there's a fresh water barrel, um, some other um, things like this. Just, uh, just really basic tundra housing. But hmm. unlike those, when you open up this room with his key, um, there are comfortable furnishings and it seems to be really well cared for. There's a nice bed with a wooden locker at its foot. There's a small wooden table with a padded leather chair. There's a candlestick and three burning candles. Um, under the table is a small wooden box and an unlit bullseye lantern with movable shutters over the lens. On the shelf above the table sit three books. In the northeast corner is a closed wooden wardrobe. Um, Mother, can you still pick locks? Yes. Yeah. I think we've got something for you potentially. I'll see if this chest. Wait, wait, where were the chests over here? Yeah, there's a chest here. Uh, okay. Oops, excuse me. At the foot here. Uh, I should probably check it for traps first. Um. Nene! <laughs> I suppose I'll allow the nickname to stand. And uh, where are the books? DM? Hmm? I'm making a beeline for the books once I set Nene and Nether on the chest. Okay. Um, they are... Um, the books are on the... Um, just set on the... Um, Give them to me. There are three of them. As you see, um, one is a um, naval almanac listing tide times for the area of the coast around Salt Marsh. About 100 miles of coast is covered in this almanac. There is a treatise concerning the demigod Luce, Eus, and its minions. And there is also a volume of erotic poetry fully illustrated. Hmm. I will take all of that. Um, Looking around, there is also a slip of paper loose in the treatise that has a number of phrases in common and then what looks like, um, I guess... Actually, don't know. All right, friends. Here, I have to ask you: What is the alphabet for the goblinoid language? It's dwarfish. Dwarfish. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, oh my god! I've been playing D and D so long. <laughs> that, that was my instinct, but I wasn't. That was quite an sure. easy question, actually. <laughs> but like, the knowledge you have at your fingertips. <laughs> your strange furry um, tabaxi fingertips. Yeah, right. As you guys are doing this, Valentine, the armor that the um the mail that this goblin is wearing is really nice. Hmm. Not oh. nice enough, apparently. I was like, except for the giant hole. <laughs> is that the hobgoblin? Yeah. Is that the hobgoblin? Uh, or... It is. Yeah. Oh, that's, so a, that's the one I was searching. Yeah. Oh, oh, so Valentine was doing that too. He just he... mentioned it. Too. Oh, well Sorry. then. Yeah. A lot of stuff going on at the same time. So. No worries. That's cool. The scales of this armor look almost like it's scale mail, but they look like fish scales. They glisten and sort of gleam and have this sort of rainbow like mm-hmm. sheen to them. That's very fancy. Fancy. Oh. Um, um, other than that, uh, what's what else is going on inside Sand Ballot's room as we Um there's Never a chest to be examined. Reaches into her hair and brings out a lockpick. And I'm looking for stuff. 
Anything, any stuff that I can steal. I mean, borrow. Repurpose. <clears throat> Repurpose. Gotcha. Make an investigation check in Eris, then. Oh, God. I should probably be also making one since I'm looking around the room, too. Um, so 11, that's better. Nine. Oof. Not good. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, you feel like you're kind of going over the room pretty well. Mm-hmm. And that's it. that's about all you find. Um, Is there anything nice in the wardrobe? Yeah, there's a nice um, uh, floor-length cloak. It's a inky black cloak that you think is probably He's... worth a bit. Yeah, um, like with a, dozens of pockets on the inside. Um, probably something a spellcaster would like to wear. Got it. And um, yeah, you guys look around. You find this lantern, this bullseye lantern with the sort of shutters. Uh, it looks like it isn't used all that often. Is this chest locked? Uh, no, the chest is uh, unlocked. So she's like, "Oh, I see the problem." <laughs> Just opens it, <laughs> puts the pick back in her hair. Wow, Nether, you're so amazing. Hmm. Ah. Um, the chest is actually, do it, is empty. Hmm. Oh. I put my hands in anyway, looking like sort of feeling around. Yeah, no, no feel false like there's bottom. Anything in here. Nothing like that. That's, That's depressing. An empty sea chest. Um, I put that other sheet of paper in my pocket with the other one. Okay. Well. And all this time you hear the scratch, scratch, scratch on the door, on the metal, on the metal door, and on the stone wall of bony fingers. It's so, disconcerting. Priya. Yeah. Kill. You wish to. Claim the scale? I, um, it's not just my kill. This is a group effort. I don't know what it is. It's very pretty. Well, it's, it's some sort of scaled armor. It looks, I mean, it's very fishy. It seems like it'd be right up your alley. Um, wow. Mariah, wow. you would also find, um, a very nice set of gaming dice on sand ballot and a beautifully carved pipe. It's like it's almost made out of, um, it's almost like a scrimshaw type of material. It's bone, but it is um, long and curved with nautical, um, slight little nautical reliefs carved into the side. All right, Looks I'll hold nice. on to that stuff. Um... We'll strip the armor off and so maybe we should take it back and get it checked. It looks... Take it back? Oh, when we go back to town. Is it... I don't know if it's magical. Oh, if you give me ten minutes, I could tell you. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm a little tapped out on the instantaneous effects, but if you give me a little bit, I can find oh. out. Aye, right, sure. Yeah, just stick it on the table, and I'll... Um, Feels I'll... like a very comfortable bed, and... Nether sort of climbs up into it. <laughs> <laughs> it is certainly more comfortable than any bed you'd had, but you, you get this sudden feeling that you recognize the smell of the man you just helped kill, and then you smell it on the pillow that you rest your head on, and it's a confusing sensation. Mm. Maybe. Or maybe it's... <laughs> it's a new sensation. It's new. new you gonna sensation. hang tight while I go do some work? Yeah. I'll go uh, spend about 10 minutes uh, ritually casting Detect Magic. Uh, what armor is this, sorry, DM? Is it heavy, medium, light? It is heavy armor. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. I think. What is it? Chain armor? Um, oh, no, no, sorry, it's medium. Yeah. Scale is medium. Yeah. 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 I don't know. What, what would a tabaxi wearing... What would another tabaxi think of a tabaxi wearing armor made of fish? That I've scaled up. <laughs> You set him up for that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just your nether weeping into her pillow. <laughs> weeping into the murder pillow. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's oh, the other bless. name for Sean's band. Murder pillow. Murder pillow. Murder pillow. <laughs> Yikes. All right. 
Um, this, are you guys trying to... I try to shoot. ...around here, or just trying to identify and scoot along? I uh, feels like an identify and scoot. Yeah. Well, I scoot. We have um, to take care of the undead, are we not? Eventually, oh, do we? yes. I yes. do. Okay. Maybe that's something that we rest before we tackle, since they are, you know, blocked off. In yeah. that case, um, after a bit, Mariah, your identify spell goes off. Um, this Mr. Hobgoblin did indeed have a suit of Mariner's scale mail armor. Mariner's mm. scale mail. What's this? Do? Let's have a look. Is it in the? Um, is it an item? Like a? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Mariner's armor gives you a swim speed, as I recall. Yep. Uh -oh. uh, swim speed. Because she's already got one of them. <laughs> I was uh, gonna say. And what's cool is if you start your turn with zero hit points underwater, you instantly rise 60 feet to the surface. Oh. Is it a common or...? Can also be used as a flotation device. Uncommon. 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 What's that called? Kind of... Oh, are we okay? Yeah, I see it. And there's... Yep. Scale mail. Oh, so, so it's the same armor. Okay. Um, is anyone going to wear it? Um, yeah, you're more than welcome to. I, I, mean, I can't. I can. There we go. That's all. But I say it would, it would only boost, uh, it would only give me a slight improvement, but also would disadvantage my stealth. So, seems... oh, did you do a detect magic? Chunky. Yeah. I thought you did identify. Oops. Oh, no, not on my spell list. Oh, I mean, well, that's a freebie. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, DM. Uh, excellent deception roll, Bar. Z is less, Z is less <laughs> tired than I am, I guess. <laughs> you got that. But then, would this, oh. were, would as this, always, would this be good for, I mean, you obviously you can swim already. Mm-hmm. It's just slightly higher armor class, I think. Yeah. Well, and it, it, the effect on it can still be used on you. Yeah. 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 Look, if it's if it's a higher armor class, take it. Like, yes. Yeah. Especially if you're frontline with me. Yeah, if you're a frontliner, don't be squishy. So. Yep. Um, since I do have the detect magic up, is anything else pinging? The pipe is. Oh. Okay. I'll need to have a look at that later. Mm -hmm. And you get something under the, something through the wood of the desk, actually. Through the wood of the desk. So like around. back in, oh. back in here. Back in San Ballot's room. All As right, I'll poke around about. in there. Um, with that, you can tell, um, you guys had not quite had high enough investigation to find a secret drawer underneath the desk that has San Ballot's spell book. Ooh. Ooh. Not that that that's helps cool. anyone here, but still. I was like, that's oh. pretty. It's cool. It's a thing, and it's worth something. So. Lovely. The right I buyer. Will hold on to that as well. Cool. Um, no, so it sounds like library. that's a good stopping point for us tonight. So we're just hitting time. Yeah. Here. There are likely many undead creatures behind one door, mm -hmm. and beyond a revealed hidden chamber lies a passageway that seems to be carved into the very rock. But for now, everything's pretty quiet. 